Adam played me some guys. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Oh. Um, Scott, my friend, must have been bored yesterday. And he sent me, it's not bad. Up, like Letterman style. Up and find. Wrote it. You wrote it. All right, save it. Save it. Yeah, save it. There were a couple that made me laugh. Can you take credit it's, for it? I can. can say that you wrote it? I, I could. <laughs> That's funny. That's way funny. Right. Now, could you just tell him? Oh, right. yeah. What do me to say I wrote? Yeah. It was already funny, but the, you, you doing it? It's, it's like, it's me and Paul funny. going, you did what at work last night? You're like, well, I got bored. I was watching the game. I got inspired. I'm like, you got inspired to do a Letterman list? <laughs> Hot mic, everyone's saying. <laughs> Welcome in. Well, happy, well, happy Friday, Friday, everybody. everybody. We, we made, made it. Ben and Woods, Woods 97.3. The fan, the fan did not get up, get up at, at 2, 2 o'clock this morning to watch, to watch baseball. baseball. And I will say, okay. I was actually a little bit bummed oh. that I didn't have to get up and watch a baseball game at 2 a.m. I miss it already. We had to wait. Now we have to was, wait. It's less than a week now. But well, you had, had two, two good, good games. games. And, and now we have to wait like a week to see real baseball again. And, and uh, I was, was a little, little bit bummed bomb this morning. I, I had fun the last that. couple of days. I really yeah, did. And yeah, uh, I know a lot of you guys out did there too. No, I know a lot of you guys out there did too. And uh, sorry, I'm, I'm very distracted right now, Benjamin. We're filling out a uh, survey for my recent visit to Scripps Hospital, and it's about 16 pages long. And you can't go anywhere now without getting a survey. How did we do? If, if you, you don't, don't hear, hear from me, you did good. good. If, if you hear from me, it sucked. That's, that's how, how I, I want to handle my business from now on. I always feel bad, so any survey I get, I fill out. Really? Every I single one. I almost always just delete them and move on. Let's, Let's get, get back, back to this in a second. I'm Woodsy. That's Paul Rindle. He's the executive producer. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Benjamin Higgins, your friendly neighborhood sports anchor, is here as well. You choose in life to just ignore things and then hope they'll go away. Is that well, how you handle those surveys? They, they absolutely, absolutely do just, just go away when you ignore them. <laughs> do they? They, they don't keep. They, they, they keep. They, just, they don't them. keep. Them. You they might resend send it one more time, time and then you delete it one more time, and then it's done. I'm still over it. You go to uh, get a sandwich somewhere, and, and by, by the, the time, time you're done eating the sandwiches, how did we do? How did we do? The sandwich was fine. It was good. How was the quality of meat? It was fresh. Mail good. Mail was fine. Lettuce was good. Good, good enough. enough. I know, I know that, that there are some businesses, businesses that rely on good, like, Yelp reviews and stuff, and, and I, I would like to be helpful. If it's a place that I really love and go often, I will occasionally drop a review or a good survey. I, sometimes, sometimes when the, uh, like, you go to the car the dealership and they service your car, they will give you the hard sell, like, you're going to get a survey tomorrow. My entire my livelihood depends on you filling this out. And if I'm if it's not a 10, you tell me now why it's a 9 and not a 10. And I'm going to fix it right now. Because if I get a 9, they hook me up to Electro. Yeah, they shock me. Yeah, 100%. And I think you feel bad for those people. They Yes, they will actually torture me if I get anything less than a 10. It's exactly the thing that happened to me when I just got my car fixed. And, and I, I go, go yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. Couple, couple days went by. I got a text from the guy at the dealership that said, hey, bud, uh, everything okay? Uh, just wondering if when you'll get to that survey. Everything we do now, not only do we have to do it, we pay through the nose for it. And then I have to, to send a survey. Paul, you need to send the tier one. Every day. So better than a survey <laughs> after the show. How do we do? Did we interrupt each other? Uh, how was our, how was our how topic selection? How funny was today's show on a scale from one to five? Five being most funny, one being you didn't really laugh at all. I mean, I got this thing. I told you guys before it was the day we went down to the hotel by uh, Seven Mile. And I got this cyst cut out of my back. And uh, overall, the experience was, I mean, anytime you have to go get something cut off your back, it's not great. 
Uh, but the, he did a great job. And I didn't feel any pain or anything like that. I will say I was laying on my stomach. And it was, I don't know, maybe the size of a, a dime. Or maybe maybe a nickel. Let's call it a nickel size little little horn on my back. So I lay down. They numb me up with shots all around it. And uh, then the guy comes in. And it's, you know, you feel a little bit of pressure. At one point, though, I was sitting there. I'm laying on my stomach like you would on a massage table, Benny. So I'm laying on my stomach, right? And all of a sudden, I can feel him, like, cutting around it. And I feel on my arm. And it was part of the, whatever, the innards landed on my arm. And that was a little bit daunting uh, for me. and almost made me vomit. In, in the, the office. office. Pus, pus is a funny pus. word. It is. So I hit a little pus, pus. on my head. Oh, <laughs> oh I get you. you. Yeah, you got, got me. me. And they, they wiped it off. And uh, and then it stitched me up. And I was on my way. And, you know, again, if something went haywire, I would have reached out to the office and said, hey, this went bad. Or this. It was great. And if, I feel like no news is good news, right, for the most part. But everything we do now, I have to send a survey about how great it was. And the way that I'm wired is that I have to do the survey. I have, that's just how I'm wired. I'm fascinated that you feel like you have to do all of them. I can't, I, I really I can't imagine. I, I bet the response rate on most of those surveys 3%. is under 10%. No and you're one of the, the 3% that always does the survey. Yeah. I just, I just don't know. I just don't know how to delete and move on. I have to, to answer those. What were you guys chatting about? Oh, just uh, something to do with your microphone and an echo that's going oh, on in the my, chat. Yeah, I don't know. My yeah. microphone? I don't know if you were not muted or something. Paul's working We've on that. We've been having an issue the entire time. Yeah, oh, I had no idea. Yeah, usually it spins you out and you just stop, stop the show entirely. So I'm, I'm glad, glad you didn't know. I, didn't hear it. I assumed you would have seen it in the chat. The yeah, chat. I was looking at the chat. I was, as I said, I was filling out this survey yeah. that is like 16 pages long. So well, I got that done. So, so scripts, great job. I got you. And uh, you guys did a great job. Thank I will you give you the uh, the counterpoint to what you brought up earlier, and that is uh, I do not miss the 3 a.m. baseball game. I was very glad to get an extra at least hour and 35 more minutes of sleep than I have the last couple of days because I don't think I was going to survive if we kept doing 3 a.m. baseball games and I had to get up that early every single day. And I think most of Padres fandom probably agrees with me. That two was more than enough in terms of 3 a.m. games to start the season. And I am ready for a couple of days off of not having 3 a.m. baseball games. I really enjoyed it. I did. I, and I like you know, I meaningful games. And so the fact that we have to get all ramped up. And yesterday's game was like a damn playoff game, right? I mean, we were... We were in here yelling at the TV, biting our nails. And now it's like, all right, hey, take a week off and... Then we'll be back with 160 of these things to go. So I was I was a little bit bummed uh, this morning when I wake up. I woke up and was like, ah, there's no game to, to watch. Really enjoyed yesterday's game a, a ton. Uh, didn't really enjoy yesterday's show. I didn't feel like we got a chance to stretch our legs at all. Coming in and doing a two hour show was just gnarly to me. I mean, I was I was wired after the show. I was I had so much more energy to burn. Um, you know, three hours is probably the sweet spot. Four is a little bit long. Two was way too short. Maybe that was uh, you out in the parking lot. When I got here this morning, I found one lone Miller Lite can crushed in the spot next to where I usually park, right where you park usually. And maybe you just needed to take the edge off. I, I, this is how my mind works. It got me thinking, where is the saddest place to drink alone? And the Odyssey parking lot really is near the top of the list. Like, who decided it? You know what? I'm going to have a beer. Where are you going to have that beer? I think the Odyssey parking lot is where I'm going to have my one drink tonight and just crumple it and toss it into the parking space where I get here in the morning. I didn't see any sign of who it may have been left by, but it was just sadly sitting there this morning when I arrived and, and parked in my spot downstairs. I'll tell you this. If there's ever a day that I'm drinking Miller Lite in my car before a show, <laughs> call my parents, call my wife. Uh, you and Polly get some people together that care about me. You know, get Foster in here. It actually could be Foster's. It easily could be Chris Foster's Miller Lite can crunched up in the, the parking lot. But if I ever get to that point, you have I, you, I'm not going to be mad at you if you call an intervention on me. If I'm drinking Miller Lite at, you know, between 4.30 and 5 a.m., uh, in the parking lot of, of the office. Like, like just, just to get up and come to work. Like, yeah. 
I was, I was concerned about, about someone, someone when I saw that. Let, Let me crush me. this one uh, before I go into the office. I, I, don't, I don't know, know that, that it's any better that if it was last, last night because they're leaving or either. But <laughs> I, it, who's it, drinking in our parking lot? I just don't, don't know who is drinking in our parking lot. Didn't make a lot of sense to me. But there are other sad places that I feel like drinking alone Drinking alone is like. Like, oh, drinking alone drinking is alone. fantastic. Well, like a hotel, like a hotel lobby. Lobby. not like, not a, like fancy a fancy hotel. hotel. That's great. That's great. Like, like you know, like you know, a like cool, cool swanky hotel, hotel in, the in the bar down, down in the lobby. lobby. Like a like non-fancy non hotel, like, like the Shiloh, Shiloh Inn in Yuma, like, like a Hampton Inn. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're drinking in the in the lobby of, of, of the of a non cool hotel is not a great place to be drinking alone interesting people are saying the echo is now getting worse i don't know what uh what it is it's my mic for sure no oh it's that's just... why paulie's now working over on my computer and trying to figure out what's going on so all mean, right well... well everyone says um everyone says that they can hear it on the app fine the radio it's the when you're doing multimedia as we do with the youtube feed as well I'm uh, very sorry that it's fixed. There, it's good now. Whatever Paulie did, very sorry that it sounds. It was him. Ah, uh, 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 yes, I got I mean, the blame. It was probably, it was probably happened yesterday on this computer. Some setting got changed. It's very but... cool. All right, why don't we? Uh, you want to just take a break here, and no. then we can come back. No, and... not at all. Okay, still no. like five minutes. It's fine. <laughs> now that it's fixed, Jeez. I guess we don't have to. Let's start. Let's start the show over. You're going to make me pull yeah, just, up the open? Yeah, just yeah. pull the open up. We'll start it over. Fresh start. Why are you doing this to me? I didn't, I didn't <laughs> do anything. He's been busy doing other things, and you throw him right on the spot to pull up the open again. We'll just start it over. Fresh vibes. All right. Happy Friday, everybody. Ben and Woods, 97.3 The Fan. Take two. Take two. It's hard to do on live radio. If we had been doing a podcast, you would have never known that that happened. You wouldn't. Hey, the, I think the levels are jacked. Let's <laughs> restart this thing. Live radio is a little bit diff different. So uh, thanks for fixing that, Paulie. So what What do we think happened? Uh, I know here exactly what the... happened. I don't want to really. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Oh, would you really? be throwing someone under the bus? Yeah, I don't know who. Are other people in here doing things on their computer? Maybe they shouldn't be. It's possible. Are we talking like corn tub? Or no. we talk? Oh, okay. Because you worked with a guy once that used to watch corn tub in the middle of your show. Yeah. And you would hear it through the studio. You would hear like, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh baby. I can't imagine. At, like we can't, like Ben just mentioned, drinking a Miller Lite in the parking lot <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning. I can't imagine at seven fifteen, like you're about to interview, you know, <laughs> uh, some college basketball analyst. You got thirty seconds to spare, and you pull up this gratuitous, you know, stuff on your work computer, and just sit back in your chair in your sweatpants and go. <laughs> Basically, the uh, yeah. could you see his hands? Were his hands above? I don't. I pretty much blocked that entire yeah morning. It's one of those. I've, I've so many. Uh, I've worked with so many lunatics too that I just I block it out. It's like you have It's to. like repression. Like yeah. you repress it, and then the memory comes up sometime, and you go. <gasps> yeah, it's and it's you get awful. Crippled with anxiety and fear. <sighs> um, so yeah, I one of the best parts about working with Ben. Never have to worry about that. Now I will lose Ben. On his computer, but he's looking up Masters stuff and golf results and Ken Palm analysis and things like that. Uh, I lose you a little bit, but at least it's not pornography. It's not. And it that, never, I don't think that never was, has I don't been. think that was the issue. Unless they were doing like their only OnlyFans on the camera here <laughs> and had to set the uh, the audio up so people could hear them, then, then that may have been the issue. Now, I know everybody that sits in that chair. Throughout the day, nobody wants that. I would think that not that's true. one soul alive wants to see any of those guys with an only. Family. All right, do not uh, clap your hands and rub them together like it's time to go. Do you see what he just did? To time me? to go. Just... 
Give me one of these. That was foreplay. Um, Tier ones, uh, if you thought we were extremely satisfied by that first segment of our show, give us a five. If you were somewhat <laughs> satisfied by foreplay today, yeah. give us a four. If you were neutral on today's foreplay, it's a three. Right. If you were somewhat dissatisfied by today's <laughs> foreplay, it's a two. And if you were extremely dissatisfied with today's foreplay segment, go ahead, give us a one. We'll work on being better next week. All right. <laughs> Good deal. The numbers are coming in right now. Three, two, five, five, two, four. I mean, this is great. So after every segment, we need to start sending out surveys. Just like every other business does now. Did you enjoy your fill-up this morning at Chevron? What? Yeah, I just got gas. I always get Here's gas. Here's the problem. We've got everything from one to five. We've got now. What? We've got no idea. Was that the greatest segment in history? Was that the worst segment I mean, in like, history? We got a 15. Every once in a while, I will go in and you know pay with cash or something. Hey, put 20 bucks on pump four. Yeah, yeah. And they go, okay, thank you. And oh, by the way, on this receipt right here, there's a link. And if you would uh, <laughs> mind filling out that survey, I'd really appreciate it. You could win a uh, pair of tickets to go see the San Diego Seals this weekend if you just <laughs> click this link. Uh, it happens all the time. Well, thank you guys for hanging in with us. And uh, we will come back. Ben will set the menu. We got a nice show today. Very, very nice show. Very excited about it. Uh, ben will will tell you all about it next. Yeah, includes uh, early guest as well. You don't want to go anywhere. It's Ben and Woods ending a very long week here on San Diego's number one sports station. Let's check Kelly Danik. May make an appearance later in the final of the Tournament of Drops as well. Traffic this morning on 97.3 The Fan.
Massive sports week continues. Had the Padres <coughs> opening games in Korea, splitting with the Dodgers. They're now headed home uh, to what is not going to be a fan fest anymore on Sunday. If you didn't hear last night, Padres did announce the cancellation of fan fest due to, uh, unfortunately, looks like the weather is going to be pretty nasty. They're also moving up to Peter Seidler's celebration of life on Saturday from 1 p.m to 11 a.m. So if you're planning on getting out there, note the time change. Uh, but we also have the NCAA tournament underway. The Aztecs play later this morning at 1045. Got to be maybe the most stressful sporting event for fans, and I would imagine for coaches and players as well. The the one-and-done nature. No, you could be playing for three weeks, and you could be playing for two hours in the NCAA tournament. You have a bad day. It's all over. It's so nerve-wracking when your team takes the court in March Madness, which is what we love about it as well, Woods, but it's also what you hate about it. I mean, we were so stressed for the second Padres game out of 162. This is one and done. This is your one chance to move on in the NCAA tournament today against UAB coming up later this morning from Spokane, Washington. Yeah, I mean, ask John Calipari how he feels this morning, and 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 you know, there's there that that game yesterday was one of the better games uh, all day, and it's not honestly, it's not just because. Uh, what was it 14, 14 over 14 three. over yeah. three not just because that it was just a damn good game I it, mean it was, it was a, so electric. fun yeah if you missed it uh the Oakland Golden Grizzlies the 14 seed pulled off an 80 to 76 upset of her third seeded Kentucky behind the three-point shooting prowess of like 40 year old Jack Golke 40 <laughs> He definitely looks like an older college basketball player. Guy shoots nothing but three pointers. Yeah, pretty much all season long. He shot like three hundred and sixty threes. Seventy three, I think. Seventy three threes it's, and eight two point baskets that's one all of the season long. What a stat! Stat lines of all time. <laughs> they made ten of them yesterday. Would you just call him a chucker? Is he just a chucker? I mean, shoot or shoot, shoot or shoot. Tosses it up. Um, so, two thousand twenty three, two thousand twenty four season shot tracker. 327 three, uh, three point attempts, eight two point attempts. Eight. Eight inside the arc. I mean, he no shot layups, all season. Toe on the, that counts toe on the line. Right. That's a two point attempt. Yeah. yeah, layups, mid range jumpers, yeah. how many, dunks. How many feet is the college three point line? What is it? 18 feet, seven inches. So, uh, the three point line? Yeah. No, no, it's longer than it's that. Longer than that, it's yeah. like twenty-seven. Okay, so he shoots twenty-five footer. It, yeah, he, that counts as a two. I mean, it, again, like that is an a, unbelievable, unbelievable disparity. Uh, but the fact that he was able to bury what ten last night, ten out of thirteen, I think he shot and, and made. He was on fire and had the crowd going bananas, doing the Jordan shrug, doing the tongue, the whole bit. It was incredible, <laughs> it was awesome. incredible. The uh, the great thing about the at least the first week of the NCAA tournament are those upsets. Everyone loves pulling. I mean, unless it wrecks your bracket, well, everyone cares? loves pulling for those teams that you've never really heard of, like Oakland. Oh, uh, Oakland, California. No, no, no. Rochester. Oh, New York. No, no. Michigan. Michigan. Rochester, Michigan yeah. is where the Oakland Golden Grizzlies come from. That that coach has been there 40 years. Somebody tweeted, that coach was coaching there before Guns N' Roses formed, and I almost <laughs> fell, I fell down laughing. One of the other upsets, uh, Duquesne, the 11 seed, knocking off six seeded BYU, 71-67. Mm, the, uh, the Dukes have not been in the tournament since we were one. Woods, 1977 was the last time yeah. Duquesne was in the NCAA tournament. Holy they had cow. won since 10 years before that. I know. So uh, always very cool. But uh, coming up on the show today, we have to get moving because we have a very busy morning. And it starts in just a few minutes when we are going to be joined by our old friend Craig Calcaterra, baseball writer and former lawyer who had some really insightful thoughts on the Shohei Otani translator gambling news that broke in South Korea this week and the possible implications for baseball's biggest star and just kind of the different uh, scenarios that do and don't make sense. And, and I don't think anyone laid it out any better than Craig Kelskatera did yesterday. Best and, I saw. Uh, it's been a while since we've had him on, so glad that we're going to get him on to talk a little bit more about one of the biggest stories in sports, probably 
so far this year. I mean, it was on the world news last night. It's, this is something that transcends just baseball fandom far beyond just the Dodgers or the NOS. This is a national and even international story, mega story right now. And Craig Calcaterra is going to be with us in just a few minutes to uh, discuss the latest on Shohei Otani. It's uh, interesting. Whew. In the 7 o'clock hour, it's been a couple of days since we've had a normal show, but we'll bring back Take on Woods and Don't Do This. Uh, talk some Padres baseball as we get ready for uh, the team to return home. I think they landed last night. Uh, what, around 10, 11 p.m.? They got back yeah, in San Diego. Like so they're back home, probably very tired and trying to recover and get their body clocks now back set uh, for the uh, the start of the season on Thursday. But we'll talk some Padres baseball. And then at 7.35, uh, an interview we actually already have in the can. So we know it's going to happen. After the show yesterday, we had a chance to talk to legendary frontman for the band Poison. Brett Michaels is going to be with us as he gets ready to perform tomorrow night following the San Diego Seals game. And you're going to be down there with Brett Michaels at the Seals game yeah. tomorrow night. And we get to talk to a genuine, bona fide rock star on the program this morning. Yes, we do, man. It's like uh, it was just curated for me because I love the Seals. I love Brett Michaels. And now it's all coming together. And also, if we win tomorrow's uh, game against the Las Vegas Desert Dogs, we have clinched a playoff spot. So Ooh. could be a really, really good night at Pachanga Arena. Get your tickets <clears throat> Excuse me, at sealslax.com if you want to come out and check out the show. Uh, and it is a show. It is a show to be sure. Brett Michaels will cap it off, and I'm uh, I'm pretty excited. In the second half of the program, uh, of course, we have been counting down our favorite 32 drops, our tournament of drops field. Yesterday, we set the final matchup, the championship round, and we will reveal the winner of the 2024 fifth annual Ben and Woods tournament of drops coming up in our 8:35 segment this morning. So, uh, looking forward to that. Rindle report and uh, more NCAA tournament talk is the. First round games on a Friday get underway later in our show today, just after 9 a.m. So very busy Friday at the end of a very busy week here on the Ben and Woods program. And guess what? Next week it's going to be very busy as well with the live opening day show downtown on Thursday and the start of baseball season and the continuation of the NCAA tournament. This is the this is the month, Woods. This I is mean, it, man. We, we love October yeah. and playoffs, but oh. this... This is a great month for sports, and we are right in the middle of it now. Yeah, Masters next month. Masters is it's just a couple weeks away. A couple weeks. It's all just coming together, man. It feels so good. It's uh, you get through January and February, and you're you're like, all right, we made it. We absolutely made it, and I feel I feel great. Well, the opening weekend of the NCAA tournament is by far my favorite weekend. It's great games all day. And all they're, day. They're always good. Yeah. They're yeah. almost always good. Even yeah. the blowouts, yeah. there's probably a 18 point spread. Yeah. Saw heard the broadcasters many times yesterday going, and uh North Carolina won by 18, and that's important to some people. Yeah, and yeah. Some, I heard, you know, whatever the, the game was. Well, but. and it's it's a good segue into our next segment with Craig Calcaterra yeah. talking about, you know, gambling and sports and, and the Shohei stuff. It, look, if you're a Dodger fan, you just want this to go away. We've been there before. As Padres fans, we've been there. We've been there with some of our superstars. You just want it to go away. You want people to stop making memes about it. You want radio hosts to stop tweeting about it. We're not going to, so quit asking. It's not going away. Craig Calcaterra, baseball writer and uh, legal mind, going to join us when we come back with Ben and Woods. Don't go anywhere. It's San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
You know, I had the thought yesterday, not, I'm sure, completely original, when it comes to Shohei Otani, that, you know, obviously he'll have some days off, probably be hurt over the next 10 years. But theoretically, Shohei Otani could play in as many as 1,620 regular season games for the Dodgers during this contract. 10 years, 162 games per season. He is embroiled in a gigantic scandal after the first of the potentially 1,620 games he has signed for, not including postseason and uh, spring training. Day that's one. that's unbelievable. One game in, and now they're dealing with something that may be part of his you know, permanent record for the entire time he's a Major League Baseball player, depending on how this plays out. We've got Craig Calcaterra standing by. It's been too long since we've talked to him. He had some incredibly, I think, uh, insightful words yesterday uh, that he sent to his cup of coffee newsletter readers about the Shohei Otani really situation. Good. And it was it was uh, easy to understand. It was very digestible, yeah. Uh, he used his, uh, his background in legal training uh, as a former lawyer to kind of set things out, and I thought it was really good. So Craig's going to join us right after this check of traffic on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Davick. Got a few things that might slow you down. Crash the clearing stage on Southbound 5 before the Coronado Bridge. Hit and run crash. Northbound 15 just past the 52. Those cars are in the center divide. And we got a traffic alert in Fallbrook. Southbound 15 right before Mission Road. This vehicle is blocking the slow lane. I'm Kelly Danica of Fennerwood, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. All right, we are joined right now by Craig Calcaterra, baseball writer, his cup of coffee a newsletter. Absolutely fantastic. A great read every day, every morning for baseball fans. Craig, welcome back to Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. How you been? I've been great. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure, man. I, I loved how you laid this out yesterday and the, the day before uh, talking about this. I wanted to ask you, start with a, kind of a broad question. What is the biggest surprise uh, to you about all of this? Because I will say when it came down, I mean, it, it, you know, it's like I told my wife, she loves all the reality shows. I hear her like screaming from the next room. That's how I was. And I've been on my phone reading about this for the last couple of days. I do enjoy a good baseball scandal. So what has surprised you the most about all this? I mean, I just that Otani's involved at all. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we don't know people. And Otani is such a huge, famous person surrounded by, you know, so many people. Plus, just because of the language barrier, we don't hear from him directly as much as the Japanese audience might. So we have this image of him as just this huge Superman in a way that we have not had of an athlete, at least in baseball, for some time. So the fact that he's even associated with scandal, no matter how it breaks out, I think is the biggest surprise so far. Craig, I think my first instinct when when the story came out was mm, probably going to be a big nothing burger in yeah. the end, unless there's a smoking gun like Otani's been betting against the uh, Angels for the last few years <laughs> that that Rob Manfred's not going to do anything at all, and maybe he won't. But after reading after reading your supplementary uh, cup of coffee yesterday, I, I started to realize this could be very problematic, even if if he wasn't even betting on anything, even if it was just his translator betting, this could be a real problem for Otani in baseball. Can you kind of explain kind of the legal ramifications of all of this? Yeah, absolutely. And, and first of all, I'll agree with you. When I first saw this, I figured, oh, so an employee of the Dodgers who's close to Otani got into some trouble. They fired him. That's going to be the end of it. But you look into this and it's, it's way, way more. Um, you know, the biggest issue you have here is we have $4.5 million in payments, uh, wire transfers from Otani's accounts to a bookie who is under federal criminal investigation. That on its surface is a huge set of problems. Um, and, and you really break down into three things. One, say that the interpreter, uh, Ms. O'Hara, is uh, a degenerate gambler, uh, ran up all these debts, uh, and then these payments came. Well, if Otani made the payments to cover the debts, even if it's the most well-intentioned of things, even if he's just trying to help out his friend in need, uh, he probably committed some crimes. Uh, it is illegal to send wire transfers to an illegal bookie under federal investigation. It is illegal to bet in California. If you bet with a bookie in uh, California and pay him off, you are essentially an accomplice in an illegal, uh, an accomplice in an illegal bookmaking operation. I'm not saying that makes Otani evil. I'm saying that's what federal law generally breaks down to. So that's a huge problem. And then that's before you get to any of the baseball stuff. 
if Otani uh, was gambling, he's in big trouble. Uh, if Otani was paying a bookie to help a team employee, uh, that's also a violation of MLB rules associating with known gamblers, uh, not in the best interest of baseball. Rule 21F of Major League Baseball's rules are there. That could lead to a either a permanent ban or a suspension of some kind. There's really no way that this doesn't turn into some sort of trouble for Otani unless the story that Otani's lawyers are saying right now is true, which is Mizuhara, the interpreter, made these wire transfers without Otani's knowledge, just basically stole $4.5 million. If that's the story and it holds up, Otani can come through this. If it's anything else, he can't. It's so fascinating. Talking to our pal Craig Calcaterra here on uh, Ben and Woods this morning has done a great job laying out a lot of this Otani stuff. I, I <clears throat> saw the updates yesterday and, you know, listen, I, maybe it's because I'm older and, um, you know, I, I'm not as fired up as I usually am. I just I said, man, OK, let, let's play this through. Uh, if he truly is a victim and and his buddy stole four and a half million dollars from him, he's going to prosecute a guy that was his best friend. And send him, I would assume, to prison because you cannot steal four and a half million dollars from someone <laughs> and and get away with it. And Not just, unless you're a politician. <laughs> exactly. And and you just say, uh, guys, I, I will never gamble again. Trust me. I, I learned a valuable lesson here. I will not do it. Like the cops, the cops and the feds are going to go, well, yeah, that sucks for you, man. But you're going to do five years or whatever. So if he comes through this, presses charges, sends this guy to prison what does that say about this whole situation? Well, it would be a, a rough situation, even there. And then again, that is the situation that gets Otani in the least amount of trouble. Uh, it, it's I hate to use the word because it's overused, but it's you know it's a tremendous distraction. Obviously, it's got to be a huge personal thing. These guys have known each other for like eleven years and have worked together for like eleven yeah. years, going back to when uh, he played for uh, the Fighters in Japan, and. Uh, so you know that would just be a huge thing for him. But, uh, you know, even then, it's going to be more complicated than that, right? I mean, I think what really gets me here, what really made me realize this was a huge, huge thing, was when that ESPN story came out the other night that said the, the interpreter and one of Otani's spokespeople told ESPN in a 90-minute interview, which, crazy, why are you doing that, yeah. that this was a situation where Otani willingly paid the debts which is, as we discussed before, trouble. And then they came off of that story when the lawyers got involved. Um, that's a huge problem, right? So if, if we now change to, oh, no, it was just theft, and you're Mizuhara, and you realize how much trouble that you are in, if that story sticks, and then you go lawyer up, and your lawyer tells you, well, yeah, you probably just admitted to a bunch of federal crimes, he's going to probably change his story, right? It could get really, really ugly. Uh, you know, the other thing I was thinking about this, this guy, Matthew Boyer, who is the uh, the bookie, I was reading some articles about him yesterday. They they said he's known as a whale in Vegas, an absolute whale, loses money, spends a lot of money. Clearly, you have to be a player if you will float four and a half million on credit, um, you know, over it, it, let's he's not doing four and a half million dollar bets, but million dollars, couple hundred thousand dollar bets on soccer games or whatever it is. But there's other people in his organization that fa fascinated me a little bit more. A guy by the name of Wayne Nix, who was a yeah. former baseball player that came up through the minor leagues. They all live in Orange County. Um, they had this big gambling ring. Do you suspect that there could be some more players that are going to be named by these guys? Because one thing we know about these bookies, I don't think they're going to go in and, and get taken into custody and be like, it was all us. We did everything wrong. Like, People are going to start talking and having receipts and records. Do you think Otani is going to be the only baseball player or athlete mentioned? Well, he's not already. We, we forget this because he's sort of out of sight, out of mind. But Yasiel Puig, That's right. Puig. Uh, yep. is, is facing a, a perjury beef right now arising out of the investigation. I won't say into Boyer because I think it might involve Knicks and some of these other Orange County people. But the feds went to Puig, who had been apparently gambling with these guys, and asked him about it, and he lied, and now he's got perjury charges against him. So we know at least one other player from Southern California is involved in this. Uh, you know, it's a huge operation. If you are floating, and again, this is if, if the story that Otani's lawyers are telling us is true, that this is a matter 
of Mizuhara simply stealing money and gambling. Why is a bookie floating Mizuhara, a guy who makes a good living but doesn't make $4.5 million in betting credit living, why are you floating that money to him right. unless you think that he's good for it, somebody's backing him, or you just want it out there that big connected ball players or people connected to ball players are involved in your operation? Uh, there's something really, really fishy about this, and I would definitely guess that it is way, way bigger than just Otani or even just Yaziel Puig. And, and one point, Craig, that, that I brought up yesterday that seems troublesome for Otani, because you just mentioned that, that this guy, Mizuhara, does not make enough money to, to be making these kind of bets. And, you know, people get in over their heads. But unless he's the worst sports gambler of all time, he didn't just lose $4.5 million right away. Usually you bet about 10 times that amount, and that's the that's the net loss. So you can probably guesstimate that, that he bet anywhere between 40 and $50 million with this bookie over whatever time period we're referring to. It's been about three years, I think. It's hard to imagine that 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 was going on for that long without Shohei Otani having any knowledge of it whatsoever or even tacit approval of it, at least, of what was going on. If we're truly talking about 40 to $50 million in sports wagers over whatever this, you know, five years, 10 years. I have no idea what the time period is, but they that's a lot in, of money over uh, any time period. They met in 21, I believe I read, at a poker game here in San Diego. So, so this is like three years. Three years, like 40 to $50 million in bets. Yes. I mean, look, I'm the worst gambler Same. that you're ever going to meet in your life. But even I sometimes win, right? I mean, right. you sometimes win. So, yeah, but the $4.5 million is, is not the whole story. It's huge. And, and then when you look into the history of the relationship with Mizuharo and Otani, things that have nothing to do with gambling, just human interest stories that have been published. There are these stories about how when Otani was with the Angels, Mizuhara had access to his cell phone, and he would put games on Otani's cell phone that he could play with his Angels teammates to sort of get to know them better and things like that. I mean, there was definitely a relationship there that was close. They'd hang out and play video games. They would just do things together all the time. I'm sorry. If I was living with someone or working with someone as closely as Otani and Mizuhara were working together, I feel like I'd be able to tell if someone is like $50 million or $20 million right. or even $4.5 million into a bookie. Now, the the other point you brought up, and, and if they are that close, it, it does make you feel like, well, maybe he does know like things like passwords sure. and, and they're that close. Has but access. you, you mm-hmm. made the point that I didn't realize, that wire transfers aren't aren't simply like sw- grabbing someone's phone and, and you just transfer $500,000 with a, a swipe to the right and then that money's gone and, hey, maybe Otani never notices and doesn't ch- check his bank account. It's much more difficult than that in, in a legal and banking sense to make those kinds of transfers. Right. I mean, it can be very simple if you have regular transactions, you know, you, you've got financial relationships with companies and things. I mean, it can be simple, but not always. I just bought a house last year and it like was a big pain to just transfer, you know, five figures somewhere to, to get the down payment in. And, you know, so that's something that is, is certainly an issue. It's not like you can just grab the phone, do it really quick. But even if you could, this stuff can be figured out. The, you know, feds are investigating this stuff. The IRS is apparently involved too. They're going to be able to know who did these transfers fairly quickly. Whether Major League Baseball wants to know, I have no idea because they've been radio silent about it so far, but someone is going to be able to know very quickly whether Otani actually affected these wire transfers or whether Mizuhara did, whether it's forensic stuff on the phone or the computer, whether it's time and place, whether it's authorizations or, or the bank calling saying, hey, are you sure you wanted to send this guy in San Juan Capistrano 500 grand? Today? Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's the sort of thing that is going to be able to be figured out. So the competing stories issue of Otani paid off these debts versus uh, Mizuhara stole the money we're going to know the answer to that at some point. We got a, just a couple minutes left with you, Craig. Uh, Calcaterra joins us here this morning. I, I, I wonder now, would it have been better if he said, my buddy has a gambling problem. I paid off his debts. I shouldn't have done that. I'm happy to pay any fines and do gambling sensitivity training, whatever. Like, is now Major League Baseball going silent? The Dodgers going silent? PR protecting Otani, as they always have and will. Is this actually the worst possible look 
for Otani now by going completely silent. And again, Major League Baseball also complicit by not saying one single word yet. Well, it's the story of Mizuhara stealing the money, just straight up defrauding Otani is borne out. If that has legs, then this is the way to go with it, right? You, yeah. you, you, you can protect yourself completely. But if there's any truth to the idea that Otani was just trying to do his friend a solid, he probably would have done better to say, yeah, that's what's happened. It's bad. With Major League Baseball, you know Rob Manfred in Major League Baseball does not want to ban the biggest star in the game in the last 25 years uh, for a very long period of time. They would probably soft pedal that, say there were extenuating circumstances. He shouldn't have done it. He's doing a fine. He's doing public service, blah, blah, blah. Yes, that could have happened. And I'm guessing whatever federal crimes are involved or state crimes, by the way, uh, for wiring money to a bookie are not so serious that Otani couldn't roll it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if the story is, if the, the reality is that Otani paid these off and now he's just going to the mattresses and putting up the barricades, that's not going to go well for him. Craig, uh, really insightful stuff. I think our, uh, our audience it. seems to it. really be enjoying it as well. If you enjoy Craig's stuff, you should really sign up for his Cup of Coffee newsletter. Most people I know around baseball consider it the best daily baseball newsletter that is out there. Craig, we always appreciate you coming on the show. Again, it's been too long, but it's great catching up with you. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, brother. There Let's do it again. Craig Calcaterra uh, really kind of laid it out in a way that uh, that made the most sense that that I've seen from from any of the reporting and there's been a ton of reporting and it's constantly changing a very complex story but a very important story for baseball as well. And a quick question for you guys. Does does something like this blowing up does it give you pause to to even hey if to to say like if you're a professional athlete the riches, the rewards, the fame, all of it that comes with it, you don't get to gamble until the day you retire on anything. Like, you've, it's getting ruined for everyone. Calvin Ridley's betting on football games. Shohei Otani's gambling adjacent. Like, it's great that you want to bet on, on soccer and, and Tottenham and stuff, but if we catch anybody doing this... Uh, but they all gamble to a certain extent. Almost every single baseball player. But it's it's hypocritical because you'll have a big DraftKings. Yeah. You know, Wrigley Field. I was just there. It took Bo there. There's a sports book attached to Wrigley Field. Attached to it. You walk in to the sports book. Technically, any baseball player that plays fantasy baseball right. is Or right. bets on cards on the airplane, which they yeah. almost all do. There's, there's a ton of gambling that goes on around a professional sports team. Now, you're going to say, well, what's the huge difference here between that and what Shohei Otani's interpreter or maybe Otani was doing? Really not that much, but we do draw a line somewhere. And it appears that the interpreter, at least, and maybe Shohei Otani crossed over where we decided to draw the line. Now, maybe you disagree with where the line is drawn, but that's where the line was drawn. You had a, you and Paul had a really interesting combo before the show yesterday. I want to bring it back okay. about Paulie saying, why don't we just let him gamble? And, and your reaction to that. Coming up next with Ben Woods on The Fan.
All right, so now we're into the discussion here on Ben and Woods. Of, uh, it, was a, it was a brief convo we had before the show yesterday. And Paulie said, I've never really understood why, you know, the, the Pete Rose thing was so big, he never bet on them to lose. And that's been Pete's kind of foundation for As a man, wasn't even playing. He was player manager for a while, but okay. yeah. But so he said, I, you know, I, I bet on the Reds to win. And he was the man in control of the Reds. And, you know, I never bet on us to lose. When I, I, I thought that at a time, I was like, I mean, if you're... If you're betting on them to lose, you're a sack of ass. Like, there's just no, there's no two ways about it. And you made a good point uh, yesterday when when you said it, and this is the reason that you, Yeah, you, I mean, like Jeter11 in the chat says, just make gambling legal in the country. Everybody's already doing it. Even if it was 100% legal in every state, it would still be impossible for a professional sports league like Major League Baseball to allow their players to gamble on their own sport. And And here's the reason why. If if you said it's okay to bet on yourself or on your team to win, just not to lose, because you don't obviously you don't want anyone throwing a game to win money. So uh, that's got to be out, right? You can't ever bet against your own team when you have an influence on the game. But even if you bet on your own team, like Pete Rose did, what happens when you bet ten thousand dollars on the first two games of the series and then nothing on the last game? Isn't it stand to reason that you would make different decisions in the games that you would bet on? Like, oh, I might press this reliever a little bit sure. more or use him in this game and say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep the bad relievers for the third game when I'm not gambling on the game. It has an absolute impact on the strategy of the season and impacts your team, even if you're not betting against your own team. Unless you are betting exactly $100 on your team to win every <laughs> single game for 162 maybe you could make the argument that, well, it doesn't really matter because you're going to manage them all the exact same way yeah. anyway, trying to win. But it, other than that, and by the way, doesn't your betting patterns, Pete Rose is betting with somebody out there, yeah. or they then know what Pete Rose is betting on. And doesn't that give them information that they can then share with a network of underground bookies, sports books around the country? Hey, by the way, Pete Rose is not betting on his team this week at all. What does that say to you out there, 100%. gambling community, that the manager of the team has decided not to bet on his own team all of a sudden? No doubt. Huge. That's, that's huge. That's absolutely enormous. That that's shifts huge. markets. It's not fair to the other gamblers if you're doing that. So there's no way, even if gambling was legal, that you could ever create a scenario where players could always safely like bet on their own teams. It's funny, too, because... Uh, I had this conversation with a buddy yesterday, and I said, um, I said to him, I go, look, as somebody that likes to play some wagers from time to time, um, we need to do traffic or something. No, oh. no as, another as, point. As but. somebody that likes to do traffic or do traffic, do play some wagers from time to time, I find it very hard to believe that the one sport where Ipe has inside information. Is the one sport he said, I'm good. If you're putting that kind of weight on other sports and you're gambling that much, we're not talking a couple hundred dollars here, man. We're talking, I want to make some money. I know that they have a meeting about it. They also have a meeting about a lot of things, and a lot of those are ignored. The one sport you decide to ignore is baseball. If it comes out that he was betting on, on baseball, this thing takes on a whole new whole new level. Well, and this is why Jorge in the chat says let them bet, except in their own sport. It's not that complicated. Major League Baseball actually does they do. let players bet on sports outside of baseball. As long as it's through a legal... And, and, and this is why that's very important. If it's through a legal sports book, then there is a record being kept of... What's going on? And if someone needed to know that, hey, this guy, he's got a problem. He's losing tons of money. And he might be putting himself in a vulnerable situation where an illegal gambler could come and say, hey, I, I see your $6 million in the hole. I, I know a way you can get out of that pretty quickly. Right we now. just need to make sure that your team loses this game. You don't ever want to get in that situation. And that's why... Major League Baseball has the strict rule about not gambling with illegal bookies because then they can't even go back and monitor. There's no record of it. They don't know how how much debt you're in and who might have their hooks in you a little bit. You may never bet on baseball, but if you get really deep in debt like Mizuhara did, there could be unsavory elements who say, hey, we can forgive this uh, you know, $4 million of debt 
you know, you just need to make sure that Shohei Otani goes over tonight. So you have a crippling gambling addiction, crippling, and you're going to tell me that you know your pal Shohei is rested, feeling good, and he's going up against the Oakland A's, and he's pitching and he's hitting, and you know he is dialed in. You know how you know that because you spent 24 hours a day with him. He's ready to go. He's locked in. You're telling me with your crippling gambling addiction that you have crippling, racked up four and a half million dollars. You're not going to call your guy and go, "Give me two million dollars on Shohei tonight." I would. He didn't even. In my mind, yeah. I'm like, you didn't even do anything wrong. And I'm actually I, if mad I, if you didn't. If, bet I, on if baseball. I'm the bookie and I know who you are, I go, no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> no, right. not giving you two million dollars on your best friend. I mean, it is. That's like if you can find a bookie dumb enough to take it, hundred percent. Knows who you are and is still dumb enough to take your giant two million dollar bet. Well, and again, man, I'm not going to be surprised if this is literally the tip of the iceberg as it pertains to players from that area, from Southern California. Um, I, if, if I doubt very much that guy's book only relied on Ipe and, and the money that, yeah. that, that he got from Shohei. I guarantee you something is going to come out with more players involved, um, and, and it's just going to be a huge, huge deal. Take on Woods has come up in just a couple of minutes. You want to get uh, online right now to play our musical trivia game, 833-288-0973. Uh, we'll have more on this story as we go on, but coming up later this hour, don't forget, rock star Brett Michaels is going to be on the program at 735 today. Woodsy has been looking forward to this one all week long. In uh, disclosure, we did talk to him yesterday after yeah. the show, so it's in the can. Uh, but I know you were looking forward to that opportunity. Did it meet your expectations? Uh, and then some. And then some. Yeah, I was very, very pleased. But you're going to actually be with him in person tomorrow night. I will. At the Seals game. Yeah, it's very excited. Very, very excited for that. Like, how many songs do you think he's going to do? I, my guess is somewhere between five and six. Right. I mean, it's, it's like a be, short concert. Yeah, short little set, probably five hits. and You don't have to pay any extra, though. No, you no. go to the Seals you game, to the you Seals get a Seals game. ticket. Yeah. You can see the Brett Michaels show afterwards. That's exactly right. That's is exactly he going to sing right. the national anthem, too? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That'd Sometimes be awesome. they do that beforehand. That'd be awesome if he did. But I, I doubt it. But he's going to get up and do nothing but a good time and every rose and something to believe in and fallen angel and your mama don't dance. and I mean, you hope. Maybe he's got some new stuff he's been working on that he wants to debut for the Seals crowd. I think I think he's probably just good with the hits. <laughs> I think in my in my opinion. Just, this is a new one. Uh, just, just trying it out here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good on it, I think. <laughs> Wrote this song a couple weeks ago. Ah, <laughs> God, no. You see me just loading up my man. backpack, ready to walk out. No, nah, man, I'm excited. I'd Faking love, a phone call. I, I gotta, I gotta, I, yeah, I've, I've loved that guy for like 40 years, so it's hysterical. All right, right now, uh, let's get back to it. After a couple of days off, we were out. Uh, it is time to play Take on Woods. All right, Take On Woods is brought to you by Valvoline Instant Oil Change. It only takes 15 minutes, and you don't have to get out of your car. For directions and discounts, go to SoCalOilChange.com. That's SoCalOilChange.com. We got Mike as our contestant here on a Friday. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, fellas. All right, uh, Woodsy's left the studio. You get to go first. Five questions of musical trivia. If you beat or tie Woods, we will put you into our grand prize drawing for a two-night stay at the Fontainebleau Las Vegas and dinner for two. Immerse yourself in timeless elegance at the Fontainebleau Las Vegas Luxury Resort Gaming Meeting Destination. Book now at FontainebleauLasVegas.com. All right, here are the category choices today. Forever and Ever, five song titles with the word ever or forever in it. Billy Goats, five artists or song titles including the name Billy. And our new category, Chow Time, musical artists and songs that include the word eat. In the name. So, Forever and Ever, Billy Goats, or Chow Time. Mike, what would you like to play? Let's do Billy Goats. Billy Goats. Okay. Uh, five song titles or artists. The common thread, they all include the name Billy. You'll have uh, five or 60 seconds to answer as many of the five as you can. If you don't know an answer, say pass. We'll come back to it. Uh, you go first. Woodsy will go second with the same five questions. First question is our two-second song. Polly is queuing it up right now. To score that point, you need to identify the song 
by title and artist. Give them both to me to score that point. Mike, you ready to play? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Category is Billy Goats. 60 seconds on the clock. Your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck, Mike. Let's take on Woods. Billy Jean, Michael Jackson. Correct. Which artist went double platinum with his solo album Rebel Yell in 1983? Billy Idol. Name the artist whose song What Was I Made For from the movie Barbie just won her a second Academy Award. Billy Eilish. Correct. Which 1980s arena rock staple is known for songs including The Stroke and Lonely as the Night? Pass. Well, born in Trinidad is Leslie Charles. Which musician had two 80s songs with a Billy combi- Ocean. Correct. Which 1980s arena rocker staple is known for songs including The Stroke and Lonely as the Night? Um, uh, uh, Billy Joel. Oh, oh, I did not have Billy Joel in there. You got four. God, he flew through those first The four. one you didn't get was Billy Squire. And I don't I, know I if it's going to cost you. I think it might. Billy Ocean might trip up Woods. Billy Eilish. I don't know. Let's bring him in. We'll see. Mike, hang on the line. All right. Woods doesn't get the category. Makes it a little tougher. Mike's score is locked in. Interesting game today. Let's put 60 seconds back on the clock. Woods, your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck. Let's take on Mike. Billy Jean, Michael Jackson. Correct. Which artist went double platinum with his solo album Rebel Yell in 1983? It's uh, Billy Idol. Correct. Name the artist whose song What Was I Made For from the movie Barbie just won her a second Academy Award. Billy Eilish. Correct. Which 1980s arena rocker staple is known for songs including The Stroke and Lonely as the Night? Billy Squire. Correct. Born in Trinidad is Leslie Charles. Which musician had two 80s songs with a combined 17 words in their titles reached number one on the Billboard charts? Billy Ocean. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Mike, five to four. Yeah. Billy Squire was Ooh, the difference. So Mike Squire was on the In, same pace as you. Yeah, yep. full loose. flying four. through, but he did not. He he was thinking Billy Joel would be in there somewhere. I guessed he didn't. And he, it wasn't I think he there. Just guessed on the last one. He In, didn't know Billy Str- uh Billy, Billy Squire. Squire. Yeah, he didn't know Billy Squire. Love so. Billy, Squire. Billy Goats was the category there. The Stroke. It's a weird chorus. I've always thought. You know the chorus to that song? I can't song? remember that one, actually. Can't you? I think you probably could, if you think about it. Now, everybody, have oh, you sir. heard? Yeah, okay, I do know What's that the one. chorus? I don't know. I don't remember. If you're in the game, then the stroke's the word. bum ba bum ba bum stroke, stroke. And the stroke, 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 stroke. No, it's stroke me, stroke me. <laughs> Oh, that's what he's yes, saying. Yes, okay. yes. That's why it's called The Stroke. I wanted you to say it, not me. <laughs> we got you to say it. Funnier I when, <laughs> when you say it. He's writing that you know, song. I'm, I'm stroke. Very, that's very bad at identifying stroke. the lyrics of songs. But he's writing the song, and then he's like, stroke, me, stroke, me. Yeah, for the chorus. <laughs> Give me the business all night long. Stroke me, stroke me. I mean, there's probably a double entendre in there somewhere. Like what? What do you mean? With your hair, like, yeah, your, his long hair, stroking your hair, your long locks, or maybe it's a keystroke and he's got a computer out. Stroke me, stroke. <laughs> yeah. Just always could be definitely different things he's referring to. I thought that was a always an interesting, uncomfortable song to listen to with my parents when I was like twelve or thirteen, <laughs> and it would be on the radio, and I'd go, "Oh boy, all right, we can turn this whenever, whenever you guys want to." Put Fleetwood Mac back on, <laughs> or the Four Tops. <laughs> I'm good with listening to Billy Squire asking to be stroked uh, over and over. All right, over we're getting into "Don't Do This" territory. And over so. and over. Good and timing over. on that, though. Uh, "Don't Do This" is coming up next. I um. So there was a great story I thought from the NCAA tournament, but now. Someone else is taking credit for the great story that was of the NCAA tournament, and I'm not a big fan of that. I think I thought you were going to bring up the awful officiating in last night's game that completely cost the eh, team. Bad, a, I don't know. Bad officiating is bad officiating. Why can't they replay it? Replay other things. I don't know. Hmm. All right, we'll get back to, to Don't Do This coming up next. It's Ben and Woods. Don't go away. Be checking traffic and then returning on 97.3 The Fam.
God. That's amazing. Sorry. We have a few options we were going through on Don't Do This. Well, I I mean, I I, got to start with one that everyone was talking about from last night. Um, Referees getting eviscerated right now, Benny, for the very controversial call in the Samford, Kansas March Madness game last night. Samford uh, attempting to come back uh, in that game and catch up to the number four seed, Kansas. Jaden Campbell pulls the Bulldogs within one with a three-pointer. Under 15 seconds left in the second half. Kansas inbounds the ball. Nicholas Timberlake goes up for a dunk to try to put the Jayhawks back up by three. But A.J. Staten McCray jumps up behind him, comes down, gets 100% ball. Clean block. Clean, clean block. All ball. It was such a brilliant block. And uh, they, they... called it's, a foul on him. It is a tough call for referees because a lot of the time, you know, they get him in the body. Even though the block is clean yeah. up there, they get him in the body somewhere because was, it's really hard to actually block a dunk. From behind, he had nothing. He, there was nothing else. To, there was no hand. There was no skin touching at all. Not hips, not feet, not legs, nothing. Completely clean block. They called it a foul. And next thing you know, he goes up, shoots two, ices the game, game over, Sanford going home, Kansas moving on, and that ref is just getting crushed today. Now, again, it brings up the point. You know, you can you can review a lot of things uh, in sports these days. And and for some reason, Ben, um, there's no – there's you, they won't let you go in and look at that. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not one of the reviewable calls at the end of the game, whether it's a foul or not. I, I mean, the reason is then you open up basically every moment of the game could be reviewed. It could. What about what about a, a, a time limit like they do in other sports? You know, everything is reviewed under two minutes or whatever. Well, like. yeah, but what about if you can review the call that was made? What about all the calls that aren't made? That aren't made? You know, then, yeah. then you say, hey, yeah, he made that three, but over here, did you see my guy... You know, Give take a take sh- little elbow shove, you know, away from the play. Well, technically, that's a foul, and it's yeah. not called. Now, what do you do? Is that reviewable? Don't, Can you challenge don't everything? They, don't they, when they are challenging something, don't they sometimes see they do another sometimes. foul and yes. call In it? the NBA, In they the do, NBA, and that yeah. happens. Happened to LeBron when the Lakers challenged one thing, and then they saw him stepping on the line on Guys, a three I mean, and another play. You're talking about 15 seconds left in that game, <laughs> and they call that foul in that spot and again i feel terrible for them um that's all ball and you know slowed it down everyone saw it, it was really really Can brilliant we, uh, play. break format and go don't do this do do this and then back to a don't sure, do this sure. before another do do this sure i'd like to give a uh partial do do this to the coach of sanford's basketball team did you guys I hear agree. Yeah. what he had to say after the game i mean i would have been <laughs> don't put me near a microphone if i'm coaching that game for sanford that was egregious it was terrible and the class that their coach showed, I thought was really well done. I have seen the play. I thought AJ made an incredible play on it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not faulting the call. You know, I mean, some people could see it different ways. Um, but I was really proud of our guys' ability to go make a play. And at the end of the day, you know, AJ's recovery there, if there is no whistle, I'm not blaming the whistle, but if there's no whistle, we're going to have a numbers advantage going the other way to advance to round two. Um, that's how close the game was. And that's how well our guys played because we were down by, what's the maximum we're down? So we're down by 22 and we're going to have the ball there. You know, I have much time left going the other way with a great opportunity. So, you know, it is what it is. Class act scene right there. A little bit classier than I would have been. All right, speaking of classy coaches, uh, Dan Monson's been nothing but classy. I don't know if we had a chance to actually bring this up on the air, but he's the coach of Long Beach State who actually was fired last week. Yep. But... They uh, let him coach in the conference, the Big West Conference Tournament, and the Beach won three games in three days to surprise everybody, make it to the NCAA Tournament and a first-round matchup against Arizona yesterday. Now, they ended up losing that game, but Dan Monson's been terrific. You know, he's he's been very um, appreciative of his time and go, hey, this is part of the job, and he's, he's been great with his players. What I didn't like, and the don't do this here, goes to Long Beach State Athletic Director Bobby Smitherin, who gave an interview Smitherin. with the Associated Press yesterday, the guy who decided to to make the change, which is fine. It's his it's his right, it's his program, it's his call. But here's what he said. He said, quote, My belief and hope is that by doing what I did and the timing of it, they would play inspired. And that's what they did. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but 
It worked. Paulie, this is your last show. Produce your ass off today. Okay? Yeah, I'll today be, sure to, I'll be last, sure to do that. Today is your last day. Bring it. Okay? For two and a half more hours. Bring it. Sorry, bud. It you need 110%. <laughs> even, even if it is somewhat true that by firing him, you galvanize the team. Right. You don't get to jump in and take credit no! for firing someone and taking away their job. <laughs> you guys see you how don't. brilliant I am? You see how brilliant I am? You, I am a genius. You let Dan get the credit and the players get the credit, and you just sit in the background and go, yeah, I know I'm looking kind of silly right now. I just fired a coach who's now taking our team to the NCAA tournament, but that's your job as the athletic director, not to sit there and pat your. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but... What I did was genius, and it worked perfectly. Oh, I think you're patting yourself on the back, Bobby Smitherin. 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 Terrible. Terrible. Smitherin. Last yeah, Smith, not Smitherman. Smitherin. Smitherin. I had not uh, heard this yet for Doo Doo This, and I really liked this. DD Mega Doo Doo. You know, our, uh, our captain, unofficial captain, Manny Machado, uh, really, really iced the game for us yesterday. <sighs> that three run homer. I've watched that thing about a thousand times. Um, and, you know, put the game, it gave us that insurance that we, we absolutely needed. That would have been such a fun home run to see at Petco. Like, oh. Does it go over the Western Metal Supply? <laughs> right. like, just, where, where does that thing land? Does just, it go off the scoreboard? Just murdered the ball. Um, it hasn't always been so easy for Manny, but one thing we've always heard about Manny is his ability to be on the field, even when he's not feeling at his best. And uh, I think he might have learned that lesson from another <laughs> Uh, ben and Woods guest, Adam Jones. Now, Adam might have told us this off the air. I've heard this story. I don't know if it was on the air, off the air, whatever. But did, uh, did we hit the mega doo doo? Let's hit it. I already did. Oh, you did it? Okay. I missed D -D it. DD mega doo doo. Don't do this. Can't have it too yeah. much. Um, this is on, well, it's on Eric Hosmer's podcast. And uh, tell I've seen you, a couple of clips and I go, oh, don't make me go watch I know. Watch don't make me go watch podcast? this whole thing. Come on. Manny talking about uh, when he first got called up to the big leagues. I loved this. I was in the minor leagues on the bus, doubling up on a two-seater. My back was banged up. My <laughs> hips were banged up. I get to the big leagues. You know, we got massage therapists. I got to the field at 12 o'clock because they told me, hey, if you're going to get worked on, you got to get there early. I was like, all right, cool. I told the, the massage therapist, hey, can you get my legs, flush them out right quick? You know, I'm super tight. Was, all right. He starts massaging me, right? You know, in Detroit, you got that tunnel before you go down. down, down uh, it was right to the right of that. And, man, it, it was the worst day ever. Adam Jones shows up, and he looks up, and he's like, man, who's back there? And I look up, I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> put, my, put my head down. He goes, damn, man. I've been here six months, and I still haven't gotten on that training table. And you've been here two days, and you're on the training table already getting a massage? What's wrong with you? And he just walks out. I looked up, and I took it out. Finish this leg, and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Just get me out of here. I hate that from AJ. I absolutely <laughs> hate that. It's the massage therapists are there for a reason to make Manny feel better so that he plays better. I, if, if I was the skipper and the whole room was filled with guys getting massages before a game, I'd be like, hell yeah, my guys are ready to go. <laughs> He's not in there because it's, it's like for pleasure. He's got tight hips. He's been riding the buses in the minor leagues. The guy wants to be at his best. We're going to break his balls for getting a massage? Unless he's just hazing the rookie. He's probably hazing the rookie. Well, it is weird, though, because the, at fantasy camp, when I go in and get massages, I always get banged in kangaroo court for it. <laughs> what are we here for? I, my back hurts. I'm trying to get ready to play a game. I think... Um... What is the, what's behind and that? And AJ knows this, though. The, a sports massage and, like, a relaxing massage it's are very different. different. I'm sure Manny didn't have, like, hot stones and <laughs> rainwater sounds. <laughs> Zen, yeah. Bro, he's got some guy behind him with his elbow grinding <laughs> yeah, into his hamstrings. It really isn't that fun, is it? I mean, it's, no. it's actually fairly unpleasant. It Adam, Adam Jones is the kind of guy, we go out to dinner with him, and he'll be like, oh, you're only getting the mild wings? What are you, a big P word? And you're like, I just want to enjoy some wings. It doesn't make me, it doesn't make you more of a man because you've got fewer massages than I did. Just let me get ready to play the game. It's so good. This man, he just, <laughs> oh, God, right there. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take those hot stones. Ooh. Yeah, that sounds good.
Oh, tea tree oil of some so sort. Good, yeah. and the aromatherapy. <laughs> Let that man live. <laughs> like they are grinding into yeah. your body. With you their can't. Elbows. You it can't. Hurts so bad. You can't say out of one side of your mouth, "Hey, I really love how Manny always posts," and then get mad at him for the way that he's able to get on the field. Now it was like his second day in the big leagues. Still, but, still. And you know, Manny has learned how to take care of his body over still, the years. Still, dude. Come on, AJ. Be better. Be better. Lay off but that kid. Good podcast story for great, sure. Great, great story. So Manny's like, just do the one leg, and I'm gonna get out of <laughs> right, here. Right, wrap it up. Wrap Ter- it up. That's Terrified. A, that's don't and do do this for a Friday. That was don't do this with Ben and Woods on ninety seven three The Fan. All right, when we come back, a rock star will join Ben and Woods. Brett Michaels of Poison. After a quick timeout, we'll be right back with more on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
This hour on 97.3 The Fan is brought to you by Ashley Furniture. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale with Hot Buys, your choice of color, starting at just $399. Ashley Sleep Mattresses starting at $250. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases only at Ashley. So, Brett Michaels is a pretty big star. Yeah. And he's going to join us so. coming up after our check of traffic. But first, I wanted to ask you, non-sports division who's the biggest celebrity you've ever met now i know you've sang with cheryl crow but is there someone even like bigger i was thinking yours was probably from the music world and i'm curious what paulie's answer is to this Mm. question as well a celebrity you've actually met in person for me i'm it's probably either walter Matthau or snoop are probably the two biggest celebrities i've met in person in my life I mean, Jack White was pretty big. He's about the White Stripes. Yeah, he's about his music as big bigger as... than. I mean, you you've actually met Brett Michaels. Yeah, he's. I mean, different kind. Cheryl Crow is Cheryl Crow's huge. massive. Yeah, massive, massive. I've met a lot of music folk uh, in in the in the industry certainly, but I mean, the sports stars too. I mean, it's it's pretty big. I'm trying to think like celebrity celebrity that I've actually I mean, my, met. First one that comes to mind is a sports star yeah but he transcends sports i've met magic johnson yeah definitely transcends well, so I, yeah I mean, ben of course ben used to play he used to babysit you <laughs> yeah play gin rummy with him <laughs> in the back of a rolls royce but yeah that was cool that's why i said non-sports division just wondering since we've got a big non-sports guest coming up here on ben and woods yeah jack I mean, white jack i mean jack white was pretty big he's Pretty, pretty famous. I mean, look, I'm interested in the chat. Throw out some of the biggest celebrities that you've non, met. Non-sports. Non-sports celebrities that you've met in the chat. We'll check traffic. Then we'll come back with Brett Michaels of Poison joining Ben and Woods next here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Well, the 15 freeway in the North County seems to be having its share of problems this morning. We still have this traffic alert southbound side before Mission Road in Fallbrook, a truck block in a slow lane, and northbound side of the 15, Carmel Mountain Road. Crash over the right shoulder, but fire crews got that right lane blocked. Up ahead past Bernardo Center, an accident has just been cleared out of the right lanes. Close to the border, San Isidro Boulevard on ramp to northbound 5. There's an accident involving a couple vehicles there over the right shoulder. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3, the fan. So... Brett Michaels is going to be uh, at tomorrow night's San Diego Seals game, yep. and he's going to perform a, a mini concert after the game against the Las Vegas Desert Dogs. Of course, Woods is going to be on the microphone, as always, doing the PA. Do you get to introduce Brett Michaels? Do you know? I don't know. I would love that's to. A, now, on. ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the one and only Brett Michaels. Okay. Now, is the rest of Poison going to be there, or just him? no? Just him just and his him. band, yeah. Okay, He's so got another band. But you actually did get to meet him yeah. a few weeks ago mm-hmm. when he came to another Seals game. His daughter Rain. Rain works for the team. She's really terrific. She's she awesome. does the sideline kind of TV reporting uh, for the team. So you actually did get to meet him, and we started our conversation yesterday after the show when we met Brett Michaels with Woods, uh, bringing up his chance to meet him a few weeks ago. Here's Ben and Woods with Brett Michaels. Hey, thank you. And that what a great night. That was uh, I, I've been to several games, but that was just a, a great night. Rain, again, so proud of my daughter and all that you bring to it. And it was a uh, I got to say this. It's uh, I had some of the members of my band with me, uh, including my music director, Pete. And he's always liked the sport. But now he's like me. He's a mega fan uh, of the seals and lacrosse. It's just such a, it's such an awesome sport. It does. It grabs you, and it, it grabbed me much mm-hmm. like Brett, um, much like Poison did back when I was a kid, and I still listen all the time. But I wanted to. I think about this like an in, inordinate amount of time, and I wanted to run this by you. So I grew up in Connecticut. Uh, in my formidable years, and I was started to listen to Poison, and I loved the whole scene. I used to read the magazines. You know you signed one for me that I had from back in the day, and I used to see these pictures of you guys on the Sunset Strip. Now, people may not know, you guys drove all the way across the country to L.A. to make it as a band. Every single time since I've moved here, I drive down the 101. I always think of you and your crew, and I wonder... What was going through your head? Do you remember the day you arrived in Los Angeles in, in Hollywood, the Sunset Strip, for the first time? Because I legitimately think about it every time I drive to L.A. Vividly. So you ready? First of all, th- that was the the era of life 
where I, I was like, look, we got to bet on ourselves. The, we, we packed up everything from our small basement of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, and got in a van, a barely running pickup truck, and a Chevette. And uh, there's no cell phones, so you're already living dangerously. There's no connection. We had the old roadmap that you opened up uh, and unfolded and made it into Los Angeles. And I will never forget ever just pulling into L.A. And although I've been to New York City and different places, it was mind-blowingly busy for whatever reason, the traffic. And I there was a feeling of pure excitement and also feeling completely overwhelmed. It was a it was a. It, it, it was a double whammy. Brett, this is a Ben. I am the uh, I'm the nerdy sports guy of the group, so my job is not to embarrass Woods when I ask you a question. So I'm going to try not to. My question ben, there is, is never there is no nerds on this phone. We love sports and music. Outstanding, We're like the ultimate True. rock and jock connection. So what I've always wanted to know is, you always hear the expression, oh, "That guy lives like a rock star." Oh, it must be amazing to be a rock star. The stereotype versus the reality i mean how close is it the, the lifestyle of a rock star tell me so here's the truth you you know you, we go out there and we still to this day i still throw a great party uh, a great after show party uh, and, and it's what you put into it because i think living like a rock star is living a little bit sort of out way outside the box, but like an outlaw, you kind of do it your way. And each person that does that, regardless of genre, music or sports or whatever, it whatever that may be, it's literally kind of just living life your way. That's what it means. And I like to treat people great. The night we were there for the SEALs game, I was meeting with everybody. I stopped and, uh, you know, met all the fans, the players, we all got to hang out. We signed stuff. And that's part of it, too. Each individual's an island onto themselves. And what I mean by that is, for me, making people feel good, having a great time. And with that, no doubt, comes the party. I mean, I've, I've done the whole wreck the cars, the mo you know, wreck the motorcycle, smashed up a few hotel rooms, uh, did, lived it up. Uh, but at the same time, uh, also, the most important thing was uh, celebrating with fans, uh, the, the fans, the bands, and the music. Is it insane to you still, uh, Brett, talking to Brett Michaels here, and when you look out at the crowd, and it's got to be a surreal feeling still, after all these years, everyone singing along uh, with, with a song, you know, a song like Every Rose that you wrote in a laundromat in Dallas, Texas, in a vulnerable moment for you, um, a song that probably was not easy to write or perform, and here we are, I mean, however many years later, I still love it. My, my kids love it. My wife loves it. Everybody loves it. Surreal. People still want to hear that song, and they still just get so emotional um, when they hear it. Absolutely. First of all, uh, thank you. Um, when I wrote that song, I was going through a big heartbreak in my life, you know, and, you know, this is and the reason I wrote Every Rose Has a Storm. I literally wrote that uh, in a laundromat in Dallas, Texas at a motel. There was no H involved. There was no hotel. It was <laughs> motel. And we had a mini Winnebago moving all of our stuff around from venue to venue. And I had the band that night uh, play at a it was a honky tonk. Uh, it wasn't really a rock bar at all. We were just breaking on Look What the Cat Dragged In. And, uh, and I remember calling from the payphone and make a long story short, uh, a, a really horrific breakup. And here we are young, but I didn't have the money to fly back to L.A. Uh, you know, we're just barely making ends meet. And th so the rose was I was out on the road making music. And the thorn is that it was also uh, the end of a relationship. So from it, I, I think with all our songs, I know with all of our songs, it's written from sincerity, whether it's nothing but a good time or you're writing something to believe in or every rose has its thorn. They, they all, they're like my kids. They all mean something very important to me. Uh, it's so it's so cool to hear the backstory uh, of that that you know I only knew a little bit of a part of. Well, Brett Michaels, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We are gonna I'm gonna be seeing you because I'm gonna be working the game Saturday night, Pachanga Arena. Get your tickets at SealsLax.com, and then make sure you stick around after 
for a concert from Brett Michaels. Get to see you up close and personal. Um, and, you know, if you need some backup, I, I got you. If you don't, that's also fine. I'm happy to enjoy the show. Whatever. Whatever you need. I mean, I'll, I'll dance on stage. I'll do whatever you want. I've got you covered. This is what's happening. Not, not kind of. Uh, you know, with my party girl, it's about inviting everyone on stage. If you saw what happened in Las Vegas last weekend celebrating uh, the, uh, my birthday uh, at the new arena there at the Virgin, uh, it was unbelievable. I brought a bunch of people on stage from Pawn Stars and Counting Cars and uh, just a bunch of friends and musicians. You're going to join me on Nothing But a Good Time. We're going to sing it up together right. uh, and make it a party. There'll be required dancing. That okay. has to happen. Done. That's a given. By, by the way, before, and, before, you, before you go, what's your sports fan dream? Like well, the one team you want to see win it all? Well, here for me, first of all, let, let's go to the Seals for one second. Congratulations. They are rocking the NLL. In, it, ahead of everybody, the team is on fire. The coaching is great. The fans are ravenous. That's the thing. It's a party. And, and that after party I'm throwing with them, this is a celebration of the sport of lacrosse, right? But for me growing up in Pittsburgh, right, I just want to say, uh, sidebar real quick, a little sidebar, you have to watch the video the night we were there singing Drew Brees and myself completely uh, it, it, it just screaming out every rose has its thorn with the fans. Uh, it's hilarious. If anyone can find that on TikTok or wherever it may live. And, but the, the ultimate thing for me growing up was as a Steeler, Pirates, Penguins, Pitt fan, uh, is going there, meeting all of them. And I got to, uh, I got to see when Roberto Clemente played, uh, you know, baseball. What, what, an, what an awesome day in my life. That's awesome. Well, we really appreciate the time, and uh, great luck with the Seals' uh, post-game performance. We're looking forward to it, man. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough, man. Keep on rocking, my friends, and uh, I'll see you up on stage. All right, I'll see you there. I was afraid he was going to get away without me getting at least one sports question. Yeah, in. I, I, I had to try to so, wedge one in there at the yeah, end. Yeah. Just curious. Wedge one, for sure. You waited until the moment that he was talking to Woods about bringing Woods on stage. He already talked to him about that. Yeah. He's done. Yeah. And Woods is going on stage for nothing but a good time tomorrow night. I was I was surprised because Paulie said we had 10 minutes, and Woods started saying goodbye to him at like six and a half. No, I was it was going, seven. And I was going, you're a little early here. Can't we get a couple more questions? In? I, don't I was like surprised to keep that you people. were. I don't like to I was surprised that him. you were already <laughs> saying goodbye to Brett Michaels. I'm well, going, I only asked one question. It was a pretty good question. Even you acknowledged it was a pretty good question. Uh, just a bunch of friends and musicians. You're going to join me on nothing but a good time. We're going to sing it up together right. uh, and make it a party. There'll be required dancing. That okay. has to happen. Right. That's a given. But, by the way, before, and, you, before, and, you, before you go, oh God, what's your sports oh God, fan oh God, dream? Oh God, oh God, that has to happen. That's a given. Didn't it sound like the end of an answer? And the Man, end it of a sentence? like he was still thought, talking to I me. thought that was the end. <laughs> yeah, and then, Jay, he said, then he started talking again. But it sounded like it was the end of his statement about you joining him on stage. James like, says, uh, what a cool moment for Woods. And then, <laughs> LOL. There'll be required dancing. That okay. has to happen. Done. That's a but, given. By the way, before, and, you, before, and, you, oh, before hey, he know. says and I, mean, ah, I, I, still... I could have stopped, but I want to get my question in. It's not over. The interview is not over yet. Woods, Mike, I'll stop. I mean, it'd be like, like if we were interviewing Phil Mickelson and he was inviting Ben to caddy, to caddy? for him. play around. You got invited. You're gonna. I'm like, hey, who's your and favorite then, hey, band? Way. Who's your favorite band? Let's, let's hear you. Give by me the, the way, give me the chorus. Let me hear it. Don't need nothing but a good time. How can I resist? Don't need nothing. Ain't but looking a, for oh, nothing. Oh, looking for nothing but, but a good, good time. time. And it don't get better than this. Very good. You know, I spent my money on women and wine, but I couldn't tell you where I spent last night. I'm real sorry about the shape I'm in. I just like my fun every now and then. I'm always working, slaving every day. Got to get a break from the same old, same old. I need a chance just to get away. If you could hear me think, this is what I'd say. Still got it. Yeah, you After do. all You've these years. Yeah. I might have listened to it 20 times yesterday <laughs> just, uh, as well, just to be safe. Yeah, he's not really calling me up there. He's really calling he's you up really there. He's not really calling me up there. He might. Well, you got your question, then. I mean, you can now, uh, maybe after tomorrow night, say you've, you've sung with both Sheryl Crow and Brett Michaels. It's a killer combo. It's a pretty good it's combo. It's a decent combination. So that's why I think you've got to get up there yeah. if you're invited.
Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think I'd have to. I can picture the scene, though. The game's over, concert's starting, you're down there, and you're trying to tell the security guy. In the no, field, no, I'm supposed no, to no, be no. up he there. He told he me. Said, he said, I'm supposed to be up there. It's nothing but a good time coming up next because I'm supposed to be up there on stage with him. I don't, I don't sure know, kid. sir. He didn't, he didn't mention anything, anything to, me to me about that. Yeah. So, I promise. Uh, he's going to be really mad if you don't let me on stage. we got a couple of minutes left here before we go to break. Uh, before that interview, we were talking about biggest celebrities, uh, especially non-sports celebrities that any of us had met. And we asked for anybody in the chat or anybody listening to give us uh, some suggestions that they have encountered. I don't know if he wants his name out there, but a buddy of ours texted me in Woods. He said... <laughs> This is amazing. My buddies and I gave Al Pacino incorrect directions when we were in college. <laughs> we couldn't believe he walked up to us and just made stuff up because we wanted to keep talking to oh, him. Uh, I think I'm not sure. Do you know where it is? <laughs> oh, uh, it's like you just you don't want that moment to end. Where is the whatever? Like that would be say hello to my map right here. <laughs> so <laughs> right, so right, great. Right. How do I get back to the freeway? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I really have no idea. That's so cool. I would have, I would have, that would have made me very nervous. Al Pacino's, he's like three feet tall, but I would have been super intimidated. Do you ask him for a picture or no? You don't. Yeah, there's certain intimidating. There's guys you don't. Pacino, De Niro. You don't yeah. ask for pics and stuff. Selfies. If you see him in the airport, back in the day, Sinatra would have been. Pretty intimidating. There's a funny story. I always see it on Twitter. Kid, a guy tells the story. He says, when I was about 10 years old, I saw Joe Pesci in the airport. I walked up to Joe Pesci, and I was like, oh, my gosh, you're Joe Pesci. And he goes, hey, who's your favorite actor? He goes, Joe Pesci. He goes, good answer, kid. And give him a $100 bill. And he said he never <laughs> forgot that. I said, that's the coolest thing ever. Ah, if I had money, I would do that all the time. So, so cool. He has changed my life forever. Who's your favorite radio show? Quinn and Chris. Yeah, I, no, never mind. No, no. Yeah, I'm not going to give you $100 for that. <laughs> so good. Well, I thought you did a good job. I liked your question about rock star Thanks. life. I appreciate that. Sorry I wrecking so, balled him. He's so earnest. Yeah, he feels he's so I was cool. I was a little surprised at how so kind. genuine and earnest he was in, in the interview. They've always been that way, man. Makes me like him a lot. Yep. All right, we will uh, come back. we got two hours left, including crowning the champion of the fifth annual tournament of drops coming up here in our eight o'clock hour don't go away more Bennett woods on the way on san diego's number one sports station 97.3 the fan
All right, Appley home on a Friday. Ben and Woods, 97.3, the fan. You cannot see one foot in front of you outside. I mean, it is it's straight white outside. It's so foggy uh, over here. So please be careful if you're driving around. Uh, it looks really, really bad. It looks like, like a, a lock in Scotland or something, a, a bog. We should call up our Scottish friend for a weather report. We should. I mean, it's not. He probably feels right at home uh, today. It looks. It looks horrible. I, I, I can't see. Pea anything. soup. Yeah, pea soup. Hundred percent. You uh, like pea soup? No. Thanks for being here, <laughs> uh, everybody. I like most soups, but I do not like pea soup. Have you tried the lasagna? I That's would my eat favorite. Lasagna. <laughs> way before I would eat course. pea soup. Uh, I'm Woodsy. That's Paul Rindo, the executive producer. Ben Higgins, your friendly neighborhood sports anchor, uh, joins us as well. I just saw a uh, story pop up on mm. Twitter. Christopher McDonald, who we've had on this program before, the great shooter McGavin, was on another radio station. I'm kind of bummed he didn't break it on our show. We haven't talked to him in a while. Uh, Happy Gilmore 2, the, the first script is, is done and in, and he's seen it and read it. And it looks like they're going to be re- doing a sequel to Happy Gilmore, which I kind of have a... In, you know, my stance on sequels is, well, they're rarely very good. Rarely. Sometimes, every now and then, you get a good one. But um, this one, I don't know why. I feel it's, I feel like it's going to be decent. I think the first one was really funny. And I love it. And I always loved it. And I think this one will be okay. Adam Sandler, I think, is writing it. And uh, I think it's got potential to find out where Happy Gilmore's been, what he's been up to. Um and and Paulie had asked me if I had Happy seen Happy Gilmore two the Champions Tour <laughs> yeah so the Champions I just, Tour I mean we had Christopher McDonald on almost three years ago today yep. and he said and he said they were working on yep. it dude are we gonna see it Happy Gilmore two the Senior Tour and Adam never wanted to make a a, a sequel um, he says I don't I don't do sequels but I said Adam but why can't I work with you on something you're a great dude we have a lot of laughs together um, he goes dude you're always gonna be the shooter I said yeah but I can do a hundred different things look at my resume I've done all kinds of different things. And he said, uh, he finally got Patrick got him to go, uh, yeah, it's green lit. So we may see it or we may not. I don't know. I'm praying that we do because. Yeah, I mean, him revisiting his role as Shooter McGavin, one of the best movie villains of all time. Period. Shooter. Period. Now, He's so good. Adam Sandler doesn't have to do sequels no. because, as, as Polly stunned me, He's still one of the, the most well-paid. Number one. He was the number one most well-paid movie star of last year. Yeah. I couldn't even tell you. What was he in last year? I don't I don't even remember. Netflix movies. People yeah. watch Adam Sandler movies, no matter what he's in. He's yeah. like he's, he's a likable guy. He's a goal. He's got the golden touch when it comes to popular movies that just resonate with people out there. Not award winning movies. No. You're not gonna, you're awesome. not gonna see them in the Academy Awards, but people will watch them when Adam Sandler is in them. No, a lot I mean a lot of them are terrible. But I, I think I don't know. This one's got potential. Um I was, you know, Anchorman two came out, it was horrific. Coming to America two came out, that was horrific. Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is coming out. The Beetlejuice trailer Juice dropped coming, yesterday. So, I mean that's been many years. I love Beetlejuice. So I didn't, great Tim Burton movie. I didn't really like the first one you didn't all like that much Michael when Keaton, I was a kid. Winona I really, Ryder. I really didn't like it. So I Tim Burton's an acquired taste and he's never my favorite, but I always loved Beetlejuice and the Danny Elfman score from that movie it was one of my favorites when I was a kid. My kids like it, uh which means I'll probably have to see the sequel. But Spinal Tap's coming out with a sequel, so I'm, I'm down for that. It just it could go bad so quickly. Uh, coming to America just broke me. Uh, part two, I, I wanted to see you know the update, and it was it was horrific. I mean, for every Top Gun two, which was awesome, incredible, yep. and and like like shockingly good. For every one of those, there's twenty to thirty horrible sequels. Just like, terrible. They're just they're, whether it's a, a reboot. Or yeah. a sequel, they're just not good. Dumb and, and Dumber was just awful. Dumb Caddyshack two. 2. Caddyshack 2 is the worst of all the time. The worst of all time, uh, I think. Jackie yeah. Mason, I've never seen a movie that was that bad, <laughs> ever. I hated Major League 2. Major League 2 was yeah, terrible. Was bad. Major League 3 was terrible. Uh, the Wall Street movie, Money Never Sleeps, I thought was really good. Shia LaBeouf, I've met him. He's pretty famous. Uh, and Michael Douglas, I thought that was actually really well done. Um but the one Paulie just asked me about at the break was funny. So last night I was watching hoops, and then I said, "All right, I'm gonna, I gotta hit the sack. I'm exhausted." So I, I saw a commercial for this movie during, the, during the basketball game. So I, you know, got in bed, got covered up, and I like to fall asleep with a movie on or something, a show. So I put on the new Roadhouse hmm. with Jake Gyllenhaal, who's a good actor. 
a good actor. And I feel like he lowered himself to do the new Roadhouse. And it's on Amazon Prime, streaming for free. So I, I put it on. I made it 15 minutes. And I thought, that's legit one of the biggest pieces of ass I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it opens with Post Malone uh, as some pit fighter uh, down there, like, fighting, beating up bigger guys. And, and Jake Gyllenhaal is, is playing the role that Patrick Swayze played in the original Roadhouse, which is a bad movie, but it's really good. Does that make sense? It's a bad, bad premise, a bad movie, but you watch it because you're like, all right, Patrick Swayze was a badass. It just it didn't need to be remade. Did I see online TMZ yesterday, Conor McGregor has a nude scene in the new Roadhouse so I movie? I you didn't, didn't, make it you that didn't get far. to that point? I did not see any... Uh, I did not see any. I think nude. it's rear nudity, not frontal oh, it's just nudity, his, his but yeah. Butt. Yeah. I think if if you were going to do nudity in a movie, what would it be? Just your calves? <laughs> Does that count as nudity? No, it doesn't. No. If you follow I him think... on social media, I follow him on Instagram. He he shows uh, very tight speedo type Connor? underwear. Yeah, like he's pretty much he's not embarrassed by all. his physique. Yeah. Like the rest of us. Is he... Well, he's got a nice physique. I mean, he's an absolute loon. Mm -hmm. Right. But does he... So it's butt. Would you show butt in a movie oh, or... Oh, I definitely... I mean... Butt over... Yeah. Yeah. I, my butt's not that bad. Booty, booty, yeah. booty, booty, rocking everywhere. Did you just say your butt is not that bad? I mean, it's not... It's not... I mean, it's not an unattractive behind. Okay. Uh, per who? Per me. Yourself. Yeah. Like you've... Yeah, you I mean, yeah, little, just the old mirror, like the, old... like the turnaround in the mirror. It's like, yeah, that's not the, my worst that. feature. I mean, it's not my worst feature. Are you caked up? <clears throat> what does that mean? Are you caked up? I don't know what that like, means. Like, do you have, like, is it cake? No, it's is not. It? It's not. It's more flat. You like a small dairy. I do. I like, that's why I prefer a smaller... And for my size, being a bigger guy, I have a, a smaller derriere, I'd say. You do? Yeah. Stand out, let me see. Let me get a look at it. I've never, never looked. Oh, yeah. You have the no acetal disease. <laughs> it's flat as a board. Yeah, I like that. You do? Yeah, I don't like big bubble, <laughs> big bubble butt. So you hate Manny Machado? Like, I would kill no, no, him to I'm, have Manny no. Machado's cake. No, I just, wouldn't, I just wouldn't want his rear end on me. It would look fantastic on you. You think it would? Yes, with Those your calves, your legs, and yeah. your supple calves, and your creamy thighs. I think it'd look great. Hmm. Paulie, what's own. your butt like? Uh, like Hank Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is dangerously close to the guys that I make fun of at the YMCA uh, in the locker room. You know the guys yeah. I'm talking about, and just. And then you have like a little indentation at the bottom where it kind of levels out and it's flat. It's very disgusting. I'm very disgusting. I don't know why my wife puts up with it, but it's not a good looking package. I'd probably go frontal, full frontal in a nude scene. More than I would do my butt. My butt is look, looks like an old man butt. It's bold. Bold of you. It needs to be warm in there. It needs to be warm and it depends on the day. There's better shoot days than other, certainly. That's got to be an awkward moment to show post hog, show hog in the in yeah. The movie. I mean, just the a couple the, of the guys have done it. Uh, no, not that, not necessarily once it's done, but the process, like the the scene, like a new you know, scene in general, would yeah, be just with the cameras. And I know they try to you know clear the set as much as possible and make it as comfortable as possible for the actors, but it can't. That's be. always got to be really uncomfortable. If we get an actor on again, I'd like to ask them: A, have you ever done a sex scene? Can you please walk us through? Do you make, imagine how uncomfortable Ben would make the actress feel, not because you're a creep, but because you'd be doing weird stuff and you'd be so uncomfortable and making jokes and stuff that she'd be like, I just, I, Ben, I'm, I'm really trying to focus here and you'd be <laughs> like making funny, you catch the Aztecs game last night? What do you think about Jaden Ready Liddy? for some carnal relations. Right. Like it would be, she'd be like, oh God, this is so uncomfortable. Would you try to like put her at ease or would you just go right into the role? Uh, you like sandwiches out there? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I just, I'm begging to get this thing over with. How would you do it? I don't. Oh, Icebreakers. I, I could not do it. I don't think. I don't know that that's something that I, I could even attempt. Attempt exactly. A bit idea has just been born. We shoot Sex our scenes. own, and we'll put you in the 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 you know unitards and all that, so right. you're not 
exposed. But like, imagine, imagine having to shoot a scene. Like, all right, Woodsy, you're in this new movie, and and Sydney Sweeney's uh, your co-star, and you guys have a, a really hot scene. I would be a wreck, a wreck for months <laughs> leading up to it. I couldn't perform. There's no way I could do it on command like that. You All right, don't action. actually, you don't actually do it. No, but like no, you have to but, kiss I mean, her yeah. and get into it. Your wife would be, my wife would be super happy you watching were, Nazi. Did you get a little in, too much into that? I think I was, baby, I was just acting. Just work. So just, I'm working. We were just, just talking work. about Adam Sandler, and I started thinking my favorite Adam Sandler movie is Funny People. It's, I think it's vastly under the stand up comedy great. movie. Yeah. Great movie. And in that movie. He and Leslie Mann kind of rekindle yeah. their old relationship. And the movie's directed by her husband, Judd Apatow. Judd Apatow, yeah. And they have, you know, a very tame love scene. Like sure. they it kind of lets your mind do the rest for it. Right. Like explain it for itself. And I go, huh. Is that awkward for Judd Apatow to sit there behind the camera? No, kiss him longer. Adam harder. Sandler. You know, doing stuff to his wife. I go, that's that's weird. Mm. That would be uncomfortable. I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, they're actors, I guess. So you just don't even think about it. Yeah, you say that, though. That's your bit. That's your fallback. I'm guessing I, this that's is, what they say. This is just work. I mean, it's another day at the office. Like if I'm Judd Apto, I'm like, all right, you guys shoot this scene. I'm just going to go take watch. a walk. Yeah. <laughs> I, had a, uh, I took an acting class in college. Yeah. I had one of the performance. There was like a requirement for like a performance art and it was a freshman year. I took an acting class, and I was assigned a scene with a female classmate. And there was supposed to be, like, a kiss in the scene. We rehearsed a lot, and we never even brought it up. Like, we're not doing that. Just ignore it. We're not doing that in the class. We did the whole scene. Never did the kissing part. And really? no one said it. The teacher didn't even say anything. The professor never even brought it up. Like, all right. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to be attractive. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. You would have kissed her regard. Like, a, a, I don't a, know. I mean, it was, still would have been awkward. Though. No, we no, like, yeah. if you had met her. Yeah, like no, there was not, it wasn't like, I don't think anyone was repulsed. Maybe she was repulsed by me. I don't know, but Possible. I wasn't repulsed by her. We just, neither of us were comfortable enough or professional enough of an actor to get to that point where we thought about doing it. Hmm, it was like a husband and a wife scene, Yeah, but they were fighting too. And oh, it was, okay. yeah, it was kind of was supposed to be like a cold kiss, like not, not a, like not, not a passionate, passionate one. but like a cold one. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think I could do it. I don't, I don't think I could pull it off, to be honest with you. That's it for us. We've got our uh, our big opening day broadcast coming up on Thursday from Baja Rick's Cantina. You can join us, the corner of 6th and L in the gas lamp for the uh, opening day of the Padres against the San Francisco Giants broadcasting live from 6 to 10 a.m. Then Annie and Elston will be in from 10 to noon. We're going to be giving away tickets to the Padres Cardinals game on April the 2nd. Plus, there's going to be Blue Moon, Coors Light, and Topo Chico specials. Breakfast serve from 6 to 10 a.m. That's Thursday. March 28th, Baja Rick's Cantina on the corner of 6th and L in the gas lamp. Brought to you by Blue Moon. Celebrate responsibly. I was looking at the Baja Rick's menu, actually, in case we wanted to grab something to eat. <laughs> oh, already. already? Yeah. And I was wondering if you guys might share with me, after the show, they have something called the Big Golden Sombrero Bucket. I think that's bad luck to eat a golden sombrero on oh, opening day. Maybe all of the Giants will get golden sombreros if we eat the golden sombrero bucket. Here's what's in the bucket. Two eight to nine ounce lobster tails, prime skirt steak, Baja style shrimp, grilled chicken breast, Alaskan king crab clusters, Mexican street corn, two Caesar salads, and a fried ice cream to share. <laughs> I'm all in, bro. I'm I'll, all in. I'll do that during the show. I got to get going. We got the show. We got to see that. I want to see that bucket next week when we're at Baja I need Ricks. to see. What's it run? Button. Market price. Oh, MP. Well, okay. I mean, it's lobster tails, so. $700. But I'm guessing it's uh, hey. it's running close to three figures, if hey. not more. Hey, did you need the golden bucket? We did, actually. Sorry. Well, ben and Woods, you, golden sombrero bucket. You're paying week. for it. Now, we can go with the smaller version, which is the original big Baja bucket. The silver bucket. It only has four-ounce lobster tails, oh. and it uh, doesn't have the prime, just the skirt steak. Okay. It, so. All right. Uh, but we could do that as well. We'll get you your bucket next Thank week. Thank you. For sure. <laughs> All right. We'll come back. Um, Polly, do you want to get to our throwback Thursday that we never had time for yesterday? Can. Paulie's got, got a good stuff. Paulie's got a throwback Thursday moment <laughs> that he's excited about. I want to talk some baseball too. Just some news and notes. Michael just said no bucket. Guys. No bucket. So, sorry, the bucket dream no, is uh no is bucket. Dumb. No lobster no next lobster week. No lobster next week. Shattering my dreams, oh, Michael. Oh boy. All right, we'll be back after a check of traffic here on 973 the fan.
We're going to throw back uh, to Throwback Thursday from Friday here in just a second because we didn't have time for it with the condensed show yesterday as the Padres went very long in their 15-11 win over the Dodgers. They're now home, presumably most of them asleep, although maybe they slept all the way on the plane and now they're going to be awake all day. That would be great. You sleep on the plane, somehow you get home, stay up today all day and get your body clock back right for this weekend, uh, tomorrow's celebration of life for Peter Seidler, which will begin at 11 a.m., was scheduled for 1 p.m., but they feel like it's going to rain in the afternoon, so they're moving it up to try to keep people dry at Petco Park tomorrow. And then Fan Fest, which was going to be a, a big all-day affair, including a bunch of the players, has been canceled on Sunday uh, because they're expecting high winds and potential lightning and rain uh, to keep everybody safe. They've decided to cancel the Fan Fest. I saw that if you have FanFest tickets, which were free, but if you did have them, you can exchange them for tickets to one, is it Tuesdays? One of the exhibition games on Monday or Tuesday. Either one, either one against the uh, Seattle Mariners. <clears throat> so you can at least go and see one of the games, which is very cool. I think um, if I take myself out of, you know, I mean, we were going to broadcast noon to two. We had a blast last year broadcasting. Uh, had Crony on the show, had Hoffy on the show. It was so much fun. It really was. Uh, last year was nuts. I will say this. For the players and the players only, I'm I'm happy for them. That trip to Korea was very, very taxing and daunting. And the media and the stuff that they had to do and all the, the bells and whistles and all the hoops they had to jump through. I understand they're paid handsomely. I get it. Uh, but that's a long, that's a long time uh, and a lot of work. And then you had two... You know, pretty hardcore games against uh, your division rival, the Los Angeles Dodgers. You come home, and on a rainy Sunday, you get to take it to the house a little bit, knowing you've got two exhibition games, a day off, and then opening day of what is a big season here in San Diego. Um, I, I'm bummed. I'm bummed, but I, I, I also understand it. And I bet you anything there are players going, ooh, all right. Whew. I mean, the fans are the only ones that are losing out on this. Yeah, the and, and it wasn't Player Fest. Like. Yeah, yeah, I, it's 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 tough, dude. I, I think you got the most honesty. Did you see the quote from Manny Machado when someone said, "Boy, that's going to make the flight a lot happier to beat the Dodgers," and he said, "We're going to be happy to get home either way." Hundred I mean, percent. It's been a long spring. It's a long spring. Long trip to yeah. Korea. Just getting home. Everyone's going to be really happy to finally be back in San Diego. And they're so. doing some of the stuff on Monday. Uh, Ed says in the chat, uh, all activities are going to happen on Monday. All uh, I don't no, know about no, all. no, 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 no. They're they're going to move like the uh, the garage sale is yeah. a huge hit at yeah. Fan Fest. I think they're going to have that available Monday, maybe Tuesday. Okay. If you know, but the, they're not going to do like the like, celebrity I, yeah, softball I think that's, games. I don't think that's going to happen. I would be so. Bummed. I think uh, after Tuesday's game, the kids can run around on the bases like they do okay. on Sundays during the season. Yeah. So they're going to. They're going to try to mix in a little bit of Fan Fest to those Monday and Tuesday exhibition games, but, I mean, for the, pretty much for the most part, Fan Fest just not happening. Just not happening yeah. this year. All right. I mean, it's it's a bummer. You can't really do much about the rain. Our game on Sunday is probably going to be canceled as well, Pauly, so um, we weren't going to be able to be there anyway. So, you know, now it's like it just everything gets put on hold. Um, it, did they say when the rain's coming? Is it coming tonight? Is it uh, coming according tomorrow? to Moses last night, Moses oh, Small of Channel. Moses from the Bible. No, no, not Moses from the Bible. Moses wow. Small, one of our <laughs> uh, weather casters, a meteorologist at Channel 10, should be coming tomorrow afternoon, uh, getting heavier in the evening and then kind of throughout the day on Sunday, and then hopefully clearing up for the games on Monday and Tuesday. All right, so my T-ball game is at 12.30. The Peter Seidler thing starts at 11, so I could be there. Here's what I don't want to happen. 30 minutes into it, I'd be like, i got to jam and get up in the middle of Don Orsillo's speech and run out to my car. So I can't make the Peter Seidler Memorial. I'm very sorry. I wish I could. Um, you know, coaching my son's team is really important to me and him. And As, it, as would Peter would say, you're the first person who say, Woods, you go co coach your kid's team. I mean, that's it's, it's what weird Peter was to, all about. To, it's weird to speak for someone that's know, no longer with but us. I but I feel pretty confident I, about that. When you said it to me last night in a text, I went, yeah. Well, I think it's also something you say to make me feel better, which I, I also appreciate. But I think you're right. Like, I genuinely, I think he'd go, dude, go coach. 
Go coach. Go go be with your your children. I will be there representing for the show, and uh, everyone knows you'd want to be there, but you've got something important, family, that you're doing, and that's that's always priority for everybody. Yeah. I mean, those kids are going to be fine without me <laughs> if I miss the game, but uh, I just think, uh, I think that that's, that's going to take uh, precedence. Quickly, just a couple of those baseball notes. Uh, the Mets yesterday signed J.D. Martinez. They did. They did. And they did. I saw uh, one year... With some deferred money, thirteen point two million overall, but it probably won't be quite as much against the luxury tax because the Mets are paying a hundred and ten percent luxury tax hit on everything still yeah. at this point. So essentially, more than double what they're paying JD Martinez is what they're actually going to have to owe. So it's a significant signing for the Mets, but in terms of the actual value of the deal for JD Martinez wasn't off the charts. I mean, it's probably probably only around $10 million in actual value this year. So are we disappointed that the Padres didn't make a stronger run at adding a, a designated hitter like J.D. Martinez if that was the price point? You know, or I think it was earlier in the week we talked about the basically at the time three remaining players that are of the most value, Tommy Pham, J.D. Martinez, and Brandon Belt. And we all picked who we would would rather have, and I had J.D. Martinez on my list. But if the the number that that is out there for the San Diego Padres is thirteen million dollars, and he would have cost twelve, uh, some defer if he would have done a deferred deal, that might have made some sense. Uh, so yeah, I'd say I'm a little bummed. I think a bat like his is only going to help this lineup, but it's all dependent on Manny Machado uh, being healthy and being able to play third base. Because if not, then you just have J.D. Martinez sitting there. So I, Tommy I, Pham still makes sense. Brandon Belt still makes I, sense. And I wonder if that lowers the asking price for a Brandon Belt a little bit, saying, oh, J.D. Martinez put up pretty good numbers last year, and if that's what he got, maybe I should be asking for a little bit less. I don't know if that affects you know free agency with the guys who are left. I did see it was weird. Justin Turner got a million dollars more and had – worse numbers than J.D. Martinez. And has he been relegated to DH only now as well? Where is Justin Turner now? Justin Turner signed with the Blue, Blue Jays. Jays. Is, he a, is he in Toronto? Is he is he their DH? Is he playing yes. first? He is? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I don't and I don't know what his positional value is and where he can play now. I would imagine third and first still uh, if needed, but if he's just a DH, he made a million dollars more. J.D. Martinez is a Scott Boris client, so there's another guy coming in for under market value, Scott Boris. I mean, he's just had a rough offseason. I guess it happens to the best of them. Interesting. Yeah. Um, a couple other baseball notes. Uh, did we talk about a little bit yesterday that um, Michael Lorenzen signed a one-year deal with the Rangers? Yep, four and a half uh, so million. So one of the last pitchers on the market. And does that mean that Jordan Montgomery is – they think he's not coming back at this point. They're not making an offer. Could he still go back to the Rangers? Not sure. I feel like the Rangers are probably out for him. I feel like they're, the Red Sox have still been mentioned. I feel like the Yankees could use another pitcher. That'd be embarrassing for, for them to admit their mistake, trading him for Harrison Bader, of all people. Montgomery going on to have a nice couple of years, including a brilliant postseason run and a World Series uh, championship under his belt. The asking price is going to be high. He's He's Boris, too, isn't he? Lorenzen? No, or no. Uh, yeah, Montgomery, Montgomery is. Yep. Yeah. He's Boris as yeah. well. So, man, it's been, a, it's been a rough one for uh, Boris Corp. And Blake Snell got introduced in a news conference from the Giants, and I thought he originally said he wasn't going to pitch in the opening series, but then I saw a story that said he hopes to pitch in the opening series against I the thought, Padres. So. I tweeted you guys the other day. I said, savor this moment, fellas, because yeah, I guess I it, was wrong. But then, uh, I don't know, someone else interpreted it a little bit differently. I guess some ambiguous comments. And that there was the thought that maybe he does want to try to pitch against the Padres at some point in the opening series. So I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work or when Blake Snell will make his official Giants debut. Well, I'm resending my tweet. Then. You should. I'm going Until to. it's official, it's not official. Correct. All right, uh, let's do the Throwback Thursday when we come back. And we'll also crown the fifth annual Tournament of Drops champion as chosen by you. The Tier 1s, over two weeks of voting, we're down to the winner. The final drop will be revealed when we come back with Bennett Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
This hour 97.3 The Fan is brought to you by your local San Diego County, the UPS store. Your local San Diego County, the UPS store locations are hosting a shred event from March 27th through March 30th. 50% off shredding services. Visit the upsstore.com for the location nearest you. See your store or the store for details. Um, we will deliver you a champion in the fifth annual Ben and Woods Tournament of Drops coming up right after this check of traffic on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Traffic is sponsored by Valvoline. Instant drive through oil change, your 15-minute instant drive through oil change. Looks like the roads are starting to wind down pretty nicely around the county. Westbound side of the 8, just before Lake Murray. Watch out for some debris in the fast lane. Also, traveling up the coastline, northbound 5, just before the racetrack. We have reports of some debris in middle lanes. Northbound 125, crash clearing just past Hamishaw. Everything's over the right shoulder. Valvoline, instant oil change is your drive through oil change. It only takes 15 minutes and you don't have to get out of your car. With all the rain lately, Valvoline is also offering your Placement wiper blades for directions and discounts. Go to SoCalOilChange.com. SoCalOilChange.com. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3, The Fan. Paul, and before we crown the champion, if you would once again relive the field of 32 drops. Good tournament this year, guys. For this year's fifth annual Ben and Woods Tournament of Drops. Here's where we started. Oh, no, I like it creamy. Ooh. Orgasmic revelation. Oh, my goodness. And someone didn't secure their load of gravel. I like squirt. Cat pervert. You're a nerd, too. I just felt the way that the roster is built, they would have to outscore their opponents to win. One. Cancel the parade. That's why you play the games. Take a listen. Oh. What up, crew? Hi, this is Jackson Merrill. He's not. Fister? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, a booty. I'm going to have a booty. Oh, my God. I'm so stiff. Balls bouncing off my chest. Big bomba class before bossing on the head. Damn it. Beautiful, gorgeous cans. Just the tip. Ding, ling, 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 ling. Samphire, the screen gets go get it. Queen draw boss, Lanta Cilio, go, go, go. It's a complete crap. You can visit Pity City, but you can't live there. It's tricky, 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 tricky. Hey, where's the freaking Gabagoo? I like wow. San Diego State. Hi, Paul. I mean, there were a lot of potential winners God, in, there, man. in that field of 32. A couple of, you know, just happy to be in there. Sure. But there was a legitimate 10 to 12 that I thought could have made it all the way to the championship and pulled down the title. But in the end, after two weeks of voting, we whittled the field down from 32 all the way to the final two. And yesterday, we put up the matchup for our championship. It was the winner of the explicit region, upper left-hand corner of the bracket, our own Kelly Danik. And someone didn't secure their load oh. of gravel. Going up against the winner of the wild card region, the lower right-hand of the bracket, Coach Darko of the Toronto Raptors. It's a complete crap. Yeah. couple of bangers. And now it is time to announce the winner, the fifth champion of our annual Tournament of Drops. With 62.9% of the vote in the championship match, your champion is... And someone didn't secure their load of gravel. Kelly wow. Danik! Kelly Danik, intrepid traffic reporter. What does working- intrepid mean? Just diligently, Diligent? like, okay. getting all the traffic that you could ever okay. need. But I always I, hear that. I'm always impressed because Kelly works our show, and then she takes a few hours off, and she comes back and works four more hours in the afternoon yeah, during the, the Gwyn and Chris show. A split, split shift, shift every single day, absolutely, which nightmare. is always tough. I'm always impressed by her dedication of being here. She rarely takes days off. Occasionally, we have Vicki Pepper, but almost always we have Kelly Danik. Uh, and Kelly, our champion... Joins us right now here on Ben and Woods. Kelly, congratulations. You are the fifth annual Tournament of Drops winner. Did you even know that you were in the running? <laughs> I had no clue. What is going on? <laughs> How's right. the fog treating you out there today? It looks oh, like it could a be nightmare. rough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, Paul, well, Paul informed me of this yesterday, and I had no idea. Well, number one, we didn't, you didn't make you sign a release or anything. No, no, no. We use your uh, used it without express You're very, written. Very consent. famous on our show. You're very popular. You. Everybody loves you, uh, and they wanted to wish you warmest congratulations for the best drop of the year. Someone forgot to secure their load of gravel. It was brilliant. <laughs> we couldn't believe it when we heard it. 
And uh, it just is, it's a champion. And someone didn't secure their load of gravel. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> were, you, were you meaning to be subtly funny there, or did that just come out that way? It just came out that way, you guys. <laughs> I see so much stuff on the road. And, I mean, for what it's worth, I actually hit a ladder one time in lane. <laughs> no it wonder explains, you are yes. so, so it's, angry when there's a ladder on the roadway. Yep. Two vehicle accident. One of those cars is on its roof, thanks to some idiot who didn't secure a ladder yes. down. Yeah, nice going. <laughs> now I get it. I fully get it. It's terrifying. Well, you know, I was, thank goodness I was in my CRV because my husband said to me, he goes, lucky you weren't in my car, his uh, Honda S2000 sports car. He oh. goes, because then I would have had a conversation with you about tailgating. I'm going, really? No word about my safety at all? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Stop <laughs> lane, you all mine. No, you know, <laughs> no worry. Truck. No worried about somebody, you know, losing their ladder. The, the surfboards always scare me. You know, a guy <laughs> oh, from yeah. Arizona comes in, gets a big surfboard from from Costco and has no idea how to secure it to the top of his car. I just move out of the way. What's the weirdest thing that you've ever reported on from a roadway, like blocking lanes of traffic that you can remember? Oh, goodness. I think um, somebody one time thought it was a good idea. They didn't have anything to strap down a mattress on top of their car, so they had some guy lay down on top of it to oh, try and weigh it down. Like he was God. on top of the car used, like, trying using to his hold body it down. weight. That does, that's not how physics works. It didn't end well. <laughs> Oh, my God. I've worked with Kelly Danik since I started in radio. She was uh, my traffic reporter at, at 94.9, and uh, just, a, just a pleasure. Does anybody ever recognize your voice out in public? Like, I know no, that voice. No, not at all. But no. I did get reprimanded. On 94.9, I did get reprimanded one time for using the word idiot. Yeah. <laughs> On 94.9, some mother called in, and she um, she said, I've got a carload of kids, and that, that traffic reporter needs to be reprimanded because I don't want my kids knowing words like idiot. I'm thinking, lady, you got bigger problems than my... <laughs> I hope she doesn't listen to this program. Oh, my God. <laughs> she must hate us. Well, Kelly, warmest congratulations. Now, There's no cash prize or anything. but There is a prize, though. There is a prize. Now, Kelly, I, I remembered this. So last year... And we do this every year around this time. The tournament of drops. Adam mm -hmm. was in the uh, the championship round, and his drop, his sound bite, actually lost. And we were very disappointed. We thought we actually had planned for him to win. I even purchased a winning gift oh, right. for him. That's right. And he did not actually end up winning. So we held on to this for a year, and we go. We'll figure something out. And it just so happened that somebody that we know personally wins the very next, the fifth annual Tournament of Drops. So uh, next time I see you here at the office, remind me, I will get you your championship. It looks like a Super Bowl ring. Yeah, it's actually really it's nice. massive, <laughs> and it looks awesome, and it is wow. uh, it is yours. Oh, my gosh. How awesome. I'll hang it from a necklace. Yeah, perfect. It's weighs I've like... I've got a chain for it. It, yeah, it weighs right about in. a pound, so it's going to look really, <laughs> yeah. really cool. Uh, but congratulations, Kelly. We love you. Keep crushing it on the traffic reports. And now you've got to right. try to defend your title. So come come strong the next yeah. year so you can get another entry into the tournament next uh, next uh, March. That's exactly right. We keep getting idiots out there driving, and I'm, I'm in. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> She she is. Is. Love you, Kelly. Thank you. I love her. Kelly Danik. She's the best. Traffic reporter extraordinaire. Yeah. And now champion. The fifth champion of our tournament of drops. Pod, a Dodger fan in the chat says Kelly now has more rings than the Padres. <laughs> Ouch. Oh. Maybe Dude, she check can. Check this thing out. This thing is nice. Let me see it. Whoa. I was, hey. I, that is, that's a nice championship <laughs> ring. I bought it on Amazon. It was like 20 bucks. It's not bad. Is not I'm at guessing they're not. They're more cubic zirconia than actual diamonds on there. Well, but. that was actually a tougher championship to win than the Dodgers run to the World Series a couple of years ago. No so, doubt about yeah, it. Con 100%. Considering the field. The field, yeah. There's <laughs> no And the question. votes that she needed to get, undoubtedly it was a tougher M -I -C -E -K -E -Y -M -O -U. championship. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U. I see. There you go, Pauly. Ooh, it's on my life. Threw that a little, <laughs> little hot. Yeah, I mean, like, if that had hit him in the head, we would be taking him to the emergency yeah, room right now. Right for his eye. Yeah, it was right <laughs> for his eyes. Yeah, listen, I mean, Darko was incredible, um, but, you know, I thought this one... It's I a was, complete crap. I was very happy with that's the win. That's Darko's reaction to not winning the tournament of drops <laughs> And that's this voted year. on by you, the fans. That's voted on by you. I was very upset with last year's results. I have no... No qualms about no, this year's. No, none whatsoever. I, uh, the only thing I have qualms with, and I know we want to get the throwback, I'm, it's, I'm actually nervous that it's 8.48, and Ben has not mentioned the San Diego State-Aztecs game that is 
two hours away. I mentioned it very early in the program. Like very a early. A cursory mention. Like I, what I said was, it's so stressful. These games almost aren't even fun to watch in the NCAA tournament. If you have a rooting interest, they're just torture. It's ju- I mean, it's great for watching the rest of I the was games. A wreck because you last can year. you can watch a game like Oakland Kentucky. And, just and you start it. getting stressed about yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. You and do. You don't even really have, other than maybe your bracket, that big of a rooting interest. Bro, but my you wife see, they were watching the Duquesne uh, BYU game yesterday afternoon. We're like, oh my God, come on, screaming at the TV. And I'm like, I couldn't care less about either of these yeah. teams. I didn't spend a ni- no uh, of none of my brackets were money brackets, really, like at all. So, I mean, I'd won is $5. Yeah, right. So I couldn't give a rat's ass about making any money on it. But like the Aztecs game today, like, if I was going to put money on it and root for the Aztecs to win, that's a double win. If I was like Brian Dutcher, I'd be so miserable knowing no matter what you did in the regular season, all year long, your really year is defined yeah, right now. by how you perform in, in this game and the next game. And that's that's about it. If they lose today, this goes down as a disappointing season. That, Big time. That's a tough job to have because they did a lot well this year you know you coach guys for months and months not just the season but the off season all it all goes basically in to try to get you ready to play this game today against UAB a team that probably a few days ago Dutch had never seen play so now he's got a scout in instantly he said I watched seven games last night full games Good of UAB God. playing are you kidding yeah, me no he said I watched seven <laughs> games of them full playing last night just so you can start putting together a scouting report because it all comes down to this and it, it's just so stressful these games they're, they're, they're great but when it's your team it's kind of not fun well, and you made the good point. Even, again, when it's not your team and you just get into the game, like that Oakland game last night. Uh, the other thing I thought Ben was 100% going to do today, and I was ready for it. Hey, Woods, where is Oakland? I just knew I was he, gonna test you. you were going to try to embarrass me uh, live on the radio. I just knew it. So I did all my research. You did. Yes. So when I said, where's Oakland? Well, it's the Bay Area. Right. And then you go, no. I go, it's in Rochester. So it's where's in, Oakland? Nope. It is in Michigan. It's in, Mich- it's in Rochester, Michigan. Yep. That's exactly right. But can, I, I knew it that you were going to try to get me today. Really good win. And I want to talk more about um, John Calipari, who some people say <sighs> he's on the hot seat. But let's get to our throwback Thursday yep. here because Paulie didn't get to it yesterday. We didn't have time with the short show. And he has a couple of clips from our past. Where do you want to start here, Paulie? Oh, let's start. I love our origin stories. Mm-hmm. You've heard us play the drop a million times. Stroganoff. <laughs> but – a couple of years ago, this was uh, four years ago this week, we actually have the origin of where that drop came from. How do you, I even I don't know exactly how to spell stroganoff, so that's going to be <laughs> it's going to be hard to get to the website, unfortunately. S T R O G A N O F F. Not O N O F F. Stroganoff. I think it's stroganoff. Stroganoff. How you doing? Romanoff. <laughs> mm. Yeah, stroganoff. Stroganoff. Two Fs, one F. Save that. Two Fs. Paul. Do it again. Two Fs, one F. Just do the whole word. Stroganoff. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, right, moving on. Is that a, so deep that in, in the tournament next year? So deep and rich. Stroganoff. Stroganoff. <laughs> Holy cow, man. <laughs> well, we were talking about Billy <laughs> Squire. Yeah, there he just there he hit is. him. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Higgins, everybody. <laughs> it literally just hit him. He goes, oh, come oh, on. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 No. I love uh, beef stroganoff. It's great. To, it's a great dish. It's a delicious meal. Rich mushroom cream. cream. Yeah, <laughs> a good like a tri like beef. tri-tip beef noodles. In there. Anything with noodles in it, I'm eating. I'm starving. All right, egg noodles. Oh, those are so good. Stroganoff. Very delicious. Yeah, very delicious. All right, and then Paul, you stroganoff. Have a, you have a second <laughs> clip for us today. And then uh, two years later, two years after the stroganoff clip, uh, we were doing. We've done this a few times now in our stint here at ninety seven three. The fan, the biggest fan contest, where we throw out a name, and you have ten minutes to call us uh, here at the studio. Let us yeah. know you heard your name we and got, you're qualified. We got a biggest for the fan uh, game next month that we're going to with the winner of our last contest. That's right. So uh, this was the biggest fan of uh, 2022, March 2022, and I believe, based on the context of the clip here, that it was also St. Patrick's Day because, well, all right, here we go. We asked Ben to read the biggest fan's name, do the whole liner in an Irish accent. Do it all Irish. Right, here we go. Today's biggest fan oh is my. <laughs> what, in the, what in the world? <laughs> Irish. 
Today's biggest what fun is, is Mark Chapa from San Marcos. Oh, my God. Oh, my calls, God. Calls back oh within 10 God. minutes okay. at 833-288-0973, and you'll be registered to win our monthly grand prize. Now I got it. You can register to have your name called <laughs> at 973-defan-sd.com <laughs> slash biggest fan. You're we'll be right legend. back with more Ben and Woods <laughs> on San Diego's number one Holy. sports station, 97.3 The Fan. That's much better. You got so, much better. So yeah, I started. I really, I really couldn't get it going, and then I thought of today's the, the biggest lucky charms. Fun you thought of the lucky, lucky charms. And I thought you need to sound more like the lucky charms <laughs> leprechaun. He got better and better. But I, we were laughing about it yesterday when Paulie told us that was the drop, and I said. Martin Scorsese could be like, you know what? I really like you on the radio. I'd like to put you in a movie. I, oh my gosh, uh, Mr. Scorsese! I got a part for a disc jockey. It would be my honor. Here's the thing: he's Irish. I'd go, oh, never mind. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll try any other accent, but uh, no. I mean, I'll send you to like a coach. No, Mm-mm. never seen. I've never seen a non-Irish person do a really good one. Brad Pitt's horrible. Tom Cruise horrible. Everyone I've seen horrible, horrible. I mean, there's great Irish actors. Why oh, would you ever yes. hire someone 100%. non-Irish to play an Irish person? Just hire an Irish guy. Don't you don't need me. I would have to. My Hannah would go. It's Martin Scorsese, and I'd be like, Yeah, I'm not going to embarrass myself for the rest of my life doing a role in an Irish accent. I think it's one of the hardest Colin ones. Farrell, Colin Farrell, Killian Farrell's Murphy, amazing. Liam Neeson is Irish. It's amazing. Yeah. All Gabriel these, Byrne. Mm-hmm. All these brilliant, brilliant actors. You know what's so funny is they can slip right into American, too. So easily. So easily. Have you ever watched a show oh, and yeah. then stunned to find like months Pitt. later that that guy is British or Irish? The guy from uh, Homeland yeah. and Billions. Mm-hmm. When I heard he was Tom Womgams Tom from, uh, he's from British. British. The, I, they were doing, he was doing the, what is it, the Mercedes Benz yeah. ads. And I'm going, he's, he's British? British? Had no idea. No idea Zero. that actor was British. It's amazing. Crazy. All right, we'll come back. Uh, we've got our Rhino Report, some headlines to you. I want to talk about um, John Calipari as well, out in the NCAA tournament again. All coming up, Ben Woods, final hour of the week next year on 97.3 The Fan.
You're a stupid man, Mr. Burke. You're only seeing me standing between you and the money. Tell me you like my hat. You're not wearing a hat. Say it. Say you like my hat. Mr. Hoggins should apologize to the trees fell for the making of his bloated autobio novel. That was Tom Hanks. It was, and, uh, it was uh, yeah. Tom Brad- Cruise, Tom Hanks, and Brad Pitt. And they were all horrible. Three Terrific. incredible actors, none of whom play, can do an Irish accent. Play it again. It goes Pitt, uh, Tom Cruise, Cruise, Cruise Hanks. and Hanks. Listen to this. You're a stupid man, Mr. Burke. You're only seeing me standing between you and the money. Tell me. Well, that was Brad Pitt. Yep. Here's Tom Cruise. Tell me you like my hat. Oh. You're not wearing a hat. Say it. Say you like my hat. Mr. Hoggins should apologize to the trees failed for the making of his bloated autobio yeah. novel. Tom Hanks, maybe the best actor of, a, of those three. He's the worst. In worst the, accent, accent by far. I would just pass. I would just say I'm, I, I can't do it. Are you sure? Like, this is a $20 million role. It's huge. Money. No, I'm good. Can we make the character Russian instead? I couldn't do Russian really either. Well, Sean Connery did Russian, but it was still completely the, Scottish. And it, right. and it worked somehow in yeah. Bond for Red October. It's weird how that works. He did, he did entirely Scottish, and yet he pulled it off as a Russian. I Genius. Just, I just watched some of Napoleon, and it's Joaquin Phoenix playing Napoleon, who was French, yes? French. And he just speaks English. Like, hey, how you doing? Let's go invade this castle. <laughs> what in the world? I guess you just have to suspend reality. For, uh, for a lot of these films. So uh, we talked earlier about the great upset yesterday in the NCAA tournament. Oakland over Kentucky. Amazing game. Third straight year. I think Kentucky's gone out first round, second round, first round. So three years, one win. People are wondering what's going on with John Calipari. And he said after the game yesterday that, that he may have to start doing things a different way. Not recre- recruiting the super freshmen like he always does. With the NIL and the transfers and other teams now, he says, hey, my team, they're like 19 years old. We're going up against teams. The kids are 23 and 24. And they've played together for a couple of years, uh, you know, and got some of that 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 synergy. Coach speak there for and, you. And none of his guys, you know, will stay for four years. Yeah. They'll go to the NBA, and, and that's how he's done it. And he's had a lot of success, obviously, doing it that way. But to me, and here's the – you know the, the the mark of a great coach is always to be able to adapt to changing circumstances. They always change, and you have to be able to identify. Nothing's stopping Calipari from bringing in a, a transfer in the portal. You you have the same rules as everybody else, yeah. and to see him struggle goes just to tell me how a great job Brian Dutcher has sure. done over the last few years in the changing cycle. He has less NIL money than everybody, and yet the Aztecs get better and better. And by the way, it's not like he's kept every single recruit. Two of his better recruits the last few years, Chad baker Mazzara, yeah, he could face him in the second round for Auburn, had a really good season after transferring out from San Diego State. And remember, lost Keisha Johnson, who's helped Arizona to a number two seat. They won yesterday in the first round of the tournament as huge well. huge yesterday two, for Arizona. Two huge players in the tournament that left San Diego State, and yet here the Aztecs still are as a five seed going into today's game against UAB. What an unbelievable job Dutch has done in the adapting, ever-changing world of college basketball. Doing a better job than John Calipari. He's got one win in the last three years. Dutch had five of them in the tournament last year alone. That's 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 incredible. And Calipari, I think they said, makes about $8.3 million a year. The guy, uh, the head coach for Oakland, makes about $400,000. He's also been there 40 years. 40 years. I think they've had four Tournament appearances. That's just a three percent raise every year for forty years, essentially. And he's got where he started. Yeah, and he's gotten that was their first tournament win. It was him last night when they asked him. So how how did you do this? And he just nodded over at the guy Jack um, Gelke. Gelke. Yeah, he just goes. This guy, this guy right here, it it was up. was awesome. And just then, an uh, awesome game. And then uh, Gelke was great as he grabs the mic at the end and goes, we're not a Cinderella. We're not a Cinderella. <laughs> no, I loved what he said, too, in his post game when he, they were asked him to clarify that. He, uh, he goes, look, I'm not going to the NBA. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be a draft pick. I know that they got draft picks, but I will always know that I can hang with guys of that caliber. And I went, man, that is really special. Now, the guy's going to be – teaching eighth grade history in about 
three years, and he, yeah, I, you're you not going to want to face him in your uh, adult league. Oh though. my, that's for God. sure. You do not. You're like, <laughs> I, you look familiar. <laughs> yeah, you're that guy. And you're like, oh God, get it, man. Uh, that was a, that was that was my favorite. You're game that three yesterday. point shooting guy, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Hey, we'll put you out on the line. You're We're that chucker. Be good. Uh, he was great. He was great. I hope, I hope they win again, man. I thought it was incredible. That's Those are the great stories from the NCAA tournament. That's why you don't ever want to take away those automatic bids. No doubt. And, you know. and, and also, like, expansion. I saw a lot of people saying last night, like, you lose some of that when you expand the tournament. Um, I, I, I think it's perfect I, as it is. I, I really I, do. I we don't have to, to change everything. Do you really want more Virginias no. at the end of the field, like, like this year, getting in? No. I, I don't think that I do. I, I really like the tournament as it is right now. So, uh, scale of 1 to 10, I know you're probably a 10 as far as nerves go. But you're also, I mean, the spread is, it's come down a little bit. It's 6.5 now. Aztecs favored by 6.5. I just, they, I just have been killed on by them all year. Just killed. If I, you know, if I, if I take the points, I lose. You know, it just. It's just tough because, I, I mean, I, I. Put money on them to cover, so they won't. <laughs> I'm, I, uh, I'm right there with you. But if I, I felt like if I don't put that bet down and just watch the game, they, they're going to win by 20. I know. And I'm going to be like, it's gonna be hey, a laugher. idiot, you, th- you knew they were going to win. When's you the, thought they were going to win. When's the last laugher they had? But I know that, and I know they played, you know, some tough opponents. Uh, second round last year actually was kind of a laugher. Um, no, no, this just, season. Oh, this general. season. When's the last uh, laugh? Fresno State, which was absolutely, when absolutely eh, about three weeks ago. Right, and every game to up from then has been an excruciating exercise in nail biting and pacing. Well, so what and, do you determine as a laugher? Ten points? Yeah, ten, twelve points. I mean, they ended up beating New Mexico by I think double digits, didn't they? But it was a close game yeah. most of the way. Yeah, exactly. Fresno they was just a true beat blowout. The hell out of Utah State. Yep, Utah State, eighty six seventy. But yep. they were down seventeen in the first half yep. of that game, so yeah. it wasn't exactly it's not stress exactly free. A, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Just one where you just go in and dominate. Fresno State, yeah. Fresno yeah. State was really 41. the last one. They got out to like fi- they were out fifteen nothing or something yeah. in that game. I would love to see that. That would be nice. Well, and, and you said UAB rebounds really well. Yeah. Um, I guess I was really confident because I thought I saw Colorado State, they crushed Virginia. I go, I knew the Mountain West was really good this year. And now Boise State lost, Colorado State lost yesterday, and Nevada blew a 17 point lead and lost. So now I'm going, maybe the Mountain West isn't that good, like people always like to say. So, I mean, they weren't that good last year, and San Diego State made it to the final two. Yep. So anything can happen. It's the NCAA tournament. But of course, I'm, I'm nervous about what's going to happen in this. You game. want to stay after and do some extra work today? Not, not really. Oh, I'd like okay. to get. Home right. as fast as possible. I mean, we might have some stuff to do. Yeah. So just really morning, yeah, a couple things. Really, yeah, sucks. I always have stuff to do. You just leave yeah. before we That's get. To exactly it. Right. <laughs> then I'll be doing that again today. All right, Polly, let's get some headlines here. All right. All right. Look, I haven't done this in a couple of days, guys. How are we doing? Fantastic. All Good. Right. So I have told you this before. I'm not a huge fan of the Olympics, summer or winter. Uh, I like the summer games, I guess, more than the winter games. But in general, Olympics doesn't uh, do a whole lot for I like for the me. winter games better. I like – I there's, I there's aspects it, to both. I mean, in, when it comes to watching it on television – I actually think it's more compelling than the summer games. Oh, I think this. I, I do. I'll watch the sprints. I like the swimming. But. Sprints don't. Sprints is just well, like downhill skiing, except there's no chance of a giant crash, <laughs> which is what you're really watching for. I, I, I support safety. <laughs> just want everybody to get out of there okay. Anyways, while I don't care for the Olympics a ton, I do feel like they provide a ton of good content for the Rinder Report in particular. We talked about the uh, the intimacy ban a few days ago that's going to be going on at the Olympic Village. And they lifted and the they intimacy lifted. ban. Yes, yes. Yeah, lifting the intimacy ban. 
delivering, I think, over 300,000 uh, condoms. Yeah, it feels real good. Yeah. Anyways, next story here is that I mean. NFL Red Zone, probably the best way to consume any sport, I think. Scott Hansen, NFL Network, they do a tremendous job on Sundays, and NBC Sports is planning a Red Zone-esque show for the olympics where they will cut two different events okay and they will be able you won't miss anything you want to know who's going to be hosting it it's probably snoop dog scott hansen oh scott hansen oh. okay nice all right i'm in now snoop really and kevin good. hart they did the uncensored on peacock you could they their like late night show breakdown of the day's events that was very funny, but this is going to be Scott Hansen basically doing NFL Red Zone for the Olympics. Great idea. Really good idea. Yeah. I want to see break dance. I mean, Olympic coverage tends to be so feature heavy, yep. and I I don't love you, tons of features. Remember that skier that you hated so oh, much? God, remember yes. that poor girl with the mental health struggles, and you just hated her? Remember that? No. You don't remember that, Paulie? You remember. I, I don't I remember who it was, but I hated yeah, I her. So much. Oh, God, I wish we could pull that audio. What was her name? She was like, she's really struggling. And Ben was like, why do we keep showing her? We don't need to show somebody that's good. I'm like, oh, my God. You don't remember that? Like Lindsey Vaughn? No, it was, I can't remember. I'll find it. Oh, you, that's why it surprised me you like the Winter Games more. You were so enraged that one that one year. I was more passionate about it, obviously. <laughs> the... Uh... Snoop and Kevin Hart coverage was amazing. Yeah, horses. I, I like this. This is equestrian. This is they prancing. Call this, they prancing. Call this equestrian. Makes me laugh. Every... By the way, look at that horse. Did you? Oh, the horse crip walking. Can huh? you see that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sick. That's gangsters a month. Hey! Come on. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, come on, man. This horse is off the chain. I gotta get this in a video. Oh, he's... <laughs> Oh my God! Snoop said I gotta put the horse in the video. Oh, Kevin Hart makes me insane. It oh, makes me absolutely God. insane. But Snoop <laughs> is amazing. Snoop knows how to put around him to make him oh. look better. Yeah, Snoop's good, good at that. It's a good idea. It's a good God, it's idea. Fantastic. You know, Eli Manning. You know, in a commercial. Yeah, that's, he 100%. knows who he knows who he looks good compared to. So that's a good idea. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. My second story here: the Miami Marlins are selling all you can eat. Tickets uh, starting at $52 for the season this year. It's going to go through the seventh inning, and you can pick up four items per trip. And I believe this comes with a seat to the game. So you let me know if you would get your money's worth here. 52 bucks. Michaela Schifrin, by the way. Oh. <laughs> that was her. My wife remembered. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. So sorry, Michaela. All right, 52 bucks. You get free water, cookies, Okay, $52. Peanuts, free water, cookies, peanuts. Popcorn. Popcorn. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Chili dogs. Chili dogs. Chili nachos. Chili nachos. Cheeseburgers. The regular nachos with cheese. And non-alcoholic beverages. I would assume that means oh, Coke, soda for Coke. the most sure. part. Uh, that is what's on the menu. You can take four items, I guess, every time you go up there. But I don't know where the seats are in the stadium, but I would say that's a pretty damn good deal. What's an, a hot dog? Like, they what, used to bucks? do this at Petco Park. They did. That, before, you know, the team got good and Petco Park <laughs> I'll take, started selling out every I'll, game. I'll take better players and the food I will options. Too. You know I will what I mean? Too. Like, there was a time when people got really excited about It's hard to do both. Let's just leave it at that. It's I mean, hard if, to if really we're talking both. full concession prices where a cheeseburger is $16, sure. then you probably can get your money's worth out of the 52 but really are That's you enjoying the bare minimum ball are you enjoying food. what you're eating though it's yeah it's not anything that sexy or exciting and i, I really shouldn't be eating two or three chili dogs during the course <laughs> of a game chili nachos and, and if you're eating popcorn you're just filling up on something that costs them like 4 cents <laughs> And you you know charging eight dollars for it. So I saw that uh, yesterday, and somebody said the only bummer about this, and I think the Marlins have done this before, is that there's like one section where you can go. Yeah. So the line Say, that's how it was at Peco well, too. One could like one stand. Yeah. So it's slammed. It's like you pay your fifty two um, bucks, they give you four at a time. Now if they give you a trough of you can take as much as you want. They don't want to waste a bunch of food, but uh, they said it's like ungodly the weight. To do it, but if you get in, get in line, get your stuff, it's not too bad. Skip Schumacher wouldn't eat any of that. No. No, God, no. No, no chance. No, zero, zero percent. <laughs>
Interesting. I mean, when you're the Marlins, you got to do that. You have they're allowing trumpets and trombones and saxophones and drums in the games. They're doing this. They're trying to drum up some interest in the team. Uh, so you got to do that. We've all we've been there. Yeah, Padres have been we've there. absolutely been there. You know. All right, and then finally, uh, this probably could have been a don't do this story. A uh, funeral home is in trouble because well they cremated somebody just a little too early. They were still hadn't I don't let the hear family this. say goodbye. Oh, I, I mean, not like she was alive. alive. I you meant they were still alive. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want this. I don't want this. No, 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 no. Ooh. <laughs> oh my god. She was dead. Oh my god. But she wasn't scheduled to be cremated for a few days. The family was still supposed to come and say their goodbyes. Oh. And when the family arrived, they said, "Oh, you're here for, you're here for her." She, we've, she's, yeah, she's right not here, here anymore in, in this decorative urn. Yeah. You guys, cremation guys or burial guys? Cremation, cremation. Like what we want to happen yeah. to yeah. us? Cremation, cremation. Same. And I don't want to be in an urn. <laughs> you don't? I don't want to be in an urn. Like a decorative urn? No. Don't want. What about? I don't want to be in a mantle. Somewhere. What if it has like an Aztec logo on it? Maybe then, like an Aztec sticker. No. What do you want to be in? I want to be scattered. Where? Anywhere. Goat Hill. Yeah, that'd be nice. Some nice restaurant. <laughs> do you see the bit they're doing at Star Wars? People are scattering ashes uh, on in some of the rides, and it like in the uh, oh, in, no. in Star Wars Disneyland, in the Star Wars ride, they're throwing. Like, oh, Fred loved this Star ride. Wars, he loved yeah. Star Wars. So they're throwing people. Right. I don't want anybody to do that. that. Let's not do that. I would. I don't want to be scattered. I want to be lugged around from really? home to home. Yes, 100%. <laughs> like Hannah gets a taste. Bo gets a taste. Taylor gets a taste. And they all have it. And they take me wherever they go. I want to be with them forever. I do not want to be scattered. I'm, that's thrown away. I'm refuse at they that can, point. They can, like, melt you into jewelry. Hannah and has a necklace can... with her dad's ashes. I love that. No, I want to be gone. I want to be totally gone. Bo will put it like in an earring or something and wear <laughs> me on his ear. Whatever he wants to do. But I want them, every time they move, go, oh, my God, I'm going to bring my dad with me. Yeah, we've got uh, my late father-in-law, and we have a dog. <laughs> yeah, I've got several dogs <laughs> in my uh, on you my keep desk. Them. Keep yeah. them all. Got them all. And everywhere I go, I will take them with me with their little collars and their paw print. I got yeah, it all. we got the little paw print yeah. and a little uh, patch of fur. You have the patch of fur. They, they they put it in like a little vial, like a little some fur. I don't know why. So where? I just think, think you when you're gone, you're gone for jewelry or something. L- let me go. No, no. We, Hannah keeps her dad in a coffee can, uh, and he's in the kitchen. And like, like you, you ban or like what is it? I can't remember the brand. <laughs> but she'll like when it's his birthday. She, he's on the counter with a picture right there, and he's there. He's always with us. It's, why is that funny? <laughs> She's going to murder you. If you put something in a coffee can in a kitchen, there's a chance someone's going to brew it. It's a fair point. point. That's actually, well, you got to remember, we don't let anyone in our home ever, so we're good. Like, no one has ever set foot in our house. I don't think Taylor's waking up in the middle of the night and like, I just need some coffee. Mm. Coffee tastes terrible. This tastes like death. Literally. Literally. So no, I want I want my kids and my wife to carry me around everywhere, every <clears throat> apartment they move into. Like God dang it, I'm gonna lug this turd with me everywhere I go. Don't you think you'll just end up in a basement or something somewhere? Maybe sometime. Maybe. Maybe. Spill I even worse. Not. I hope not. Spills in the carpet. I hope vacuumed not. up. I hope not, man. <laughs> I hope that's not. what I don't want. I don't want to be spilled in a carpet and vacuumed up. <laughs> if you die before we do, we're taking it to explicit, I'm sprinkling some there for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh. I want to keep talking about this at some point. I bring this back. That's at some fine. Point. This is great. I think we can. Um, all right, we'll come back. We're going to give away some Jim Norton tickets. And uh, talk a little more Padres baseball, I think, at the end of the show. It's Ben and Woods. Check traffic with uh, Champion Kelly next on 97.3 The Fan.
I think you might be right. Paul's wife, Megan, in the chat said if she died, <laughs> she wants Paul to put her in a chair, like taxidermied, in a rocking chair in the corner, which is morbidly terrifying. <laughs> Just as hey, as rocking much... chairs are scary even when they're empty. Well, I don't you're know right. Why. They are. You are absolutely. If they you are see creepy. one, if and you it s- like moves, like it rocks without this anyone is, in it. This is all news to me, by the way. This is not something we've talked about. So you come home from work, you throw your backpack down on the kitchen counter, and you look behind. Ah! And <laughs> she's just sitting there, and then you start to affect her voice, like Psycho. Right? That's what happened in the movie Psycho. <laughs> it was his mother. Now, did he have? He- I, so I thought. I obviously, I think he killed. He killed his mother, and then he became kind of her and dressed up as her. But, but he also had. Did her he dead have the body. body there or not? Y- or was yes. she just gone? No, I can't remember. He he had a stuffed because he was a taxidermist. Remember, he had all the animals everywhere. He also ran a motel. He did the Bates Motel. Yes. So I do think he had her dead body, uh, taxidermied, and he would put her in that chair. And then he would also affect her voice and also dress like her. It's a very, very uh, scary film. Do very. they still, I, I remember when I was a kid, they'd go on the Universal Studios tour and they'd take you past the Bates Motel. Scared the crap out of me. And do they do that nowadays? I and mean, there's no way kids nowadays have ever heard of Psycho. It's no. like 70 years old now or something. Right. There's no way. They're like, That's the Bates Motel. What, right. What's that? <laughs> Where's Paw Patrol? That's what I want to see. <laughs> scared me to death, man. My dad made me watch that movie when I was like ten, and it scared have me. Have you showed? To uh, have you have you had your kids watch no, it yet? No, no. Psycho, I think, is even too scary for little kids. It is like creepy. They still have. Oh, they said yeah. They still have Norman come out and chase the tram on the studio tour. They still have that. Hmm. Wow. Let me get back up there. Taylor murdered me over the weekend. We, uh, Your boys were out at our baseball game, mm-hmm. and they were playing in the bullpen. When I got there and I walked over, I said hi to Bo, told me about the, catching his leprechaun yep, that morning. Yep, leprechaun and that morning. I saw ta- uh, Taylor, and I go, hey, buddy, how you doing? He goes, good. I'm like, you having fun? He goes, did you know Orange Cat licked my face today? <laughs> Dude, I, said, too- I did not know that. He goes, yeah, it was while we were watching um, The Shining. Shining. Yeah, he wants to want to watch The Shining. There's three. <laughs> What are you doing? Finding my copy to give away some Jim Norton tickets. Let's do it. It's time to give away some Jim Norton tickets. Hell yeah. You can get uh, your own tickets for Jim Norton at the Belly Up on July 25th at TicketWeb.com or be the third caller right now at 833-288-0973. Give away a pair of Jim Norton tickets to the Belly Up this summer, July 25th. Again, TicketWeb.com is where you can get them yourself. Comedy. Tough. You've done it, Woods. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm scared by it. You'll do up it. Up on stage. You'll you want do me to do it badly point. at some point. It will it's never happen. happen. It's, going, it's to happen. going to happen. It's going to happen. This year, you will do stand-up comedy. The rhythm. This year. This year? Oh, yeah. I was thinking maybe next year. This year. Well, maybe next year, but yeah. most likely this year. We can pull it off. You think we can? Yeah. Open mic night? Kind of a tier one open mic night would be good. Somebody else will probably steal that idea. Uh, so mm-hmm. trademark. Copyright infringed, Ben and Woods, Tier 1. That's open not mic. how copyright infringement I just did. Works. I said it you on the air. Not. Yeah. You can't say it. I just, just did it. It's not like dibs. I dibs on it. <laughs> you have dibs. to actually legally file paperwork. It's quite complicated, actually, to get a trademark or a copyright. Somebody said Ben can just get on stage and read what he likes. No, no, you have to actually put together <laughs> jokes. A set. A set. Ten, as it were. Ten minutes. Ten, ten minutes. minutes. You're, I want you to headline. I've always wondered, how do comedians remember... Like, like an, when they are on an hour? There's a light. No, 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 not the time. Oh. I mean, like, you're set. Like, some comedians will be up there, like, if you're performing yeah, 45 minutes in concert, hour. 45 to an hour. They're professionals. It's that's still, what they do. That's a long time to remember, like, the entire set. And I imagine there's a little improv that goes on. Oh, yeah. Between, oh, you work the room, work the crowd. Between yeah. bits, like how you get to one bit to the next bit. But yep. just remembering like the order of bits and how to set up takes, every single joke. They take months, months. though, mastering yeah. these stories. And then it's no, the not transition once. He from thinks one that you perform other. once, comedy skit, and then you've got to come up with a completely new one. Whole new set. set every time is how didn't I didn't realize that comedians perform the same set over and over again. Well, you know me. I don't really, I like fresh. I like to keep it fresh. And I did not know that people just did five minutes and then they just went out the next week into the same five minutes. That sounds boring to me. So I'd write a new five minutes for every week. 
and it really became quite excruciating. And uh, but it was a lot of fun, and it's probably the biggest rush I've ever had in my entire life. Diesel says, "I'll pay to see Ben do stand up." Yes, that's you the will. Point. You will. That's, yeah, that's literally <laughs> the point. We want to make some money on this. Yeah, uh, maybe for charity, but yeah. you will pay. Yeah, you will pay if uh, any of us are getting up on stage to do comedy. We're not doing that for free. Yeah, no, that's not going to be like this. Isn't a seven mile appearance? No, no, or no, opening no, day at Baja no, Rick's Cantina. No, no. If we're getting up on stage, there's going to be some sort of compensation for doing so. And just remember, if anybody else tries to do this, we do What's it. his copy right? You heard it here first. We're suing you. Uh-huh. All right. We'll come back. Final segment of the day. Uh, we'll wrap things up, get you ready for a big weekend here. And then Annie and Elston will take over. It's Ben Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Guys, congratulations to both of you for all your hard work. We were two subscribers away from 5,000 YouTube subscribers on the uh, Ben and Woods channel. Nice. And that's really cool. And so I tweeted, please uh, go click subscribe if you can. It doesn't cost you anything, right? And get us uh, over 5,000. We're not going to buy followers and stuff and subscribers. No. Many do. Are we there now? Do we yeah, get I think there? we're there. 5,000 and five. What did the 5,000th subscriber win? <laughs> Anything? Nothing. Nothing. A nice shout out on the radio there to you whoever you are. They get uh, easy access to our content. That's exactly right. That is always the prize. You turn on notifications, you will be notified on your phone every time we go live. Thank you so much. It's been fun to watch this thing grow like a little. It's been a little over a year now. Like a little weed. Just keeps growing. Someday we may be so popular they'll put us on the radio. Yeah, maybe. We're maybe. lucky. That's exactly right. This hour on 97.3 The Fan is brought to you by Ashley Furniture. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale with Hot Buys. Your choice of color starting at $399. Your choice of color of what? Hot buys. Hot buys. Uh, hot buys. Yeah. All right. Ashley Sleep Mattresses starting at $250. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases only at Ashley. Um, we've got another 16 games just getting underway now in the NCAA tournament. First one of the day is now underway. We've got Northwestern taking on Florida Atlantic Ooh. from the uh, Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Sammy nine, Levitt biting his nails right nine, now. Nine-eight matchup uh, from uh, from New York right now. And then just starting at the moment is Colgate, a 14 seed against uh, third seeded Baylor Ooh, that's in my... Memphis, Tennessee, and that's a true TV game. That's my. I had Baylor to win it all somehow. Do you do when you do your picks? Let me ask you this, you guys. You click the little eye next to the info button and read the. You did it. Oh man, I, I, I didn't really care that much this year. I just I went. I waited until the last minute. I was so busy earlier in the week getting ready for our opening day broadcast and all that. And then it was Wednesday night, and I realized, oh crap, got to get these uh, brackets in. So for you just bam, 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 bam. Pretty. What about quick. you? Well, I, I watch enough college basketball and read oh, enough so about down. it through the year. Like, I, I feel less, like uh, less than two minutes God. total. No, no, no. Hang on, hang on. Oh, I'm not. Boy. This is not going to toot oh, my God. own horn. Oh, so oh. in in past years, I think most of most people enter multiple brackets. Right? Yeah, I'm in At this three. point. Yep. I'm also in three. And until this year, my philosophy has always been. I'm going to pretty much enter the same bracket in all of them sure. because I'm confident in my picks. I finally realized I have no idea what I'm talking about. So finally this year, I decided to do completely different brackets for all of my three, like, hoping like that, that at least one of them like that. would do well. And generally my philosophy is I pick a conference or two that I like feel good about. So like uh -oh. in one of my brackets... <laughs> I was high on the Big 12 and okay. had a lot of Big 12 teams. And then in the next bracket, I was very low on the Big 12 and I was high on the SEC and had those teams but going. Wait, wait, wait. Out. So if you're high on the Big 12 in general, yeah. but then your, your next bracket, you have to go against I, I, them? Yeah, exactly. I did the exact but opposite. But if you're high on them, aren't you high on them all the way? Like if you like if you say well, I, I love I, the big... but that's what I used to do. I was like I'm really confident okay. in this conference this I year, see. and I put all my brackets and all my eggs in that basket. So your ass is covered, and, and then I'd end up being wrong. <laughs> so this year, like through one day, like in one of my brackets, I'm near the bottom, but in the same bracket thing with the two brackets, yeah. I am in the top because yeah. I have two completely different brackets in there, and one of them I'm not doing well, and one of them I'm doing quite well. I feel like that's like walking to the roulette table, taking red and black. $10 and go, here's red and here's black. <laughs> I'm winning. And until it hits green, green zeros. Yeah. <laughs> so and that, eventually, you know, you've got to pick some right, you know, in the later rounds if you really want to win these Yeah, games. no question. It's yeah. such a weird feeling when one of your, like, Top, you know, final four just gets banged in the first. I had Kentucky going fairly far. And had them in the Elite Eight. There, they they got out pretty good. I don't have, Ken I didn't have Kentucky deep in any of my brackets. They they weren't a team. It was the only that one that hurt me. I was that yeah. worried about this year. Bo mm -hmm. had, Bo picking Oakland was pretty solid last night. We watched that game together, and I was explaining to him, you know, Cinderella story and what that means and how how difficult it was and. And then when I check the brackets, I go, dude, you had Oakland. He goes, yes, so I'm beating you. I go, I think we're tied. But he, the <laughs> dude is psychotic about keeping score. I mean, they played basketball in his room last night with the, you know, the little rim, and you throw the ball. He's like, I beat Taylor 36 to three. I'm like, bro, you got to stop keeping score on everything. It's just insane. The problem because we're picking those upsets so fun, and oh, it's you so know fun. When, we're, when we're doing it, but. 
the penalty for being wrong oh. on an upset and having the team, the favorite, then go on and just roll go to the Elite Eight or the Final rounds, Four yeah. is way more damaging than the reward for correctly getting that upset in, in the, the first, first round. round. And then they lose in the second round. Anyway, it's like, yeah, it was cool. I can I can trumpet being right on this one upset. But the other two I picked, the teams that I thought they were going to be, they both went to the Elite Eight or the Final Four. And then you have no chance at winning your bracket. That's when you just we've talked a lot about gambling this week. But that's when you put just if, if you feel good about that upset, that's when you go put some money on it. That's the one. and that's, Don't ruin your bracket because you're not going to have a perfect bracket. You never have the stones. Now, at halftime yesterday watching Oakland and Kentucky, some people went in and, and bet that like, at, I had a at half. Par- small parlay, yeah. but I had Kentucky minus 13 in there. and Minus 13. I thought they were – I mean, they were a three versus a 14 seed. I didn't know anything about Oakland. <laughs> that's that was a pretty I mean, safe bet. People going in and, yeah, you make some money at halftime going, I like the way they're playing. I like the way this kid's shooting. Probably still got good odds at halftime to go in and put a little money yeah, on. I never think about it. I really don't. I'm not the world's best gambler. I'm not. No, no and, and, and by the way, that, just, just to be I clear. I like degenerate doing live betting. Oh, You're yeah. also not a professional baseball player. That's true. Which, uh, and we have, again, no problem with sports gambling. It's just when you're a pro baseball player, you can't do certain things, and that's why... The Shoei Otani story is big. It makes it hard to talk about. Like, we're casually talking about gambling. No one, no one on this show, at least, is saying that Shohei Otani is a bad human being nope. because he got involved somehow with gambling. Yeah, even if it's at a, even if it, like I said yesterday, adjacent, even adjacent. Right. It just, you have too much to, there's too much to risk for, but that's the thing. And you know who did a really good job on this? I listened to yesterday. Uh, our buddies from Cespedes Family Barbecue. And they, you know what I loved about it? They broke it down into a couple different parts, and they said, we need to be careful here because when somebody has a crippling gambling addiction, one that would lead you to lose $4.5 million, that's not exactly funny, right? So they wanted to be sensitive to that, which which I thought, man, that's really good. Then they talked about, hey, man, this is also two best friends. One of which may have stolen five million dollars from his buddy, may have to do time. That's also not very funny. You know, at the end of the day, it can absolutely ruin lives. Just like we talked about earlier in the week. Alcohol, sex, food, drugs, whatever it may be. Um I I I, I thought they handled it really, really well. Yeah, it's not it's not a funny story. The only thing potentially somewhat humorous is the fact that the Dodgers Spent so much money in the offseason, yeah. and they have had now have, are having to deal with this right That's now. That's exactly As right. As a Padres fan, I find that a little bit humorous, sure. but the actual circumstances of what's going on, it's, it's I'm sure it's very painful for all of them right now. And it's uh, you know, and Shohei Otani has always seemed to be a pretty good guy, and I don't really wish this on him. Even if it does make the Dodgers suffer a little bit, sure. I mean, that's the 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 human side. Of it. And what, what did make me laugh was Dodger fans tweeting. I don't get it. Everybody loves Shohei Otani. Now he's a Dodger and everyone hates him. Where's the empathy? And I'm like, where's the empathy? Did you guys have a lot of empathy for Fernando Tatis Jr., a kid that, you know, wrecked his motorbike and hurt his shoulder? No, you didn't. Like, that's that's just the way sports rivalries go, right? I, there's no empathy. Did they have empathy for Jose Altuve? You know? I mean, what are we talking about here? That's the... The story would still be huge if Otani signed with... The twins, a hundred. Oh, it'd be it'd be massive. He, because it's Shohei of, Otani because of who he is, it, man. It actually really doesn't have anything to do with the Dodgers. It has to do with who he is. It's it's him and the he's the two time MVP. That is a freak of nature that we've right. never seen before in the game. It's also this this. I think the thing, the other thing I have, it's good. It's a good lesson for all of us to not prop people up that we don't really know. We don't really know a lot about. I've done it my whole life with musicians, with athletes, actors, whatever. And listen, to to a man or woman, I've almost always but been no disappointed. But no one's saying that Otani is fake or not who he says he was. Right. It's very possible. In fact, quite likely that he was trying to do something really nice for a guy who probably didn't deserve it, you know, who got in a ton of debt, and he felt like this guy's – been by my side though and while he certainly shouldn't have to pay all this money to get him out i'd like him to not suffer the consequences of his gambling debts and tried to do something 
that most of us would consider to be a pretty noble gesture. Unfortunately, that noble gesture also happened to be a federal crime and violate the rules of baseball at the same time. Yeah. But I don't think the most likely scenario is the motivations were pretty pure, I, I think, for well, Shohei Otani. I mean, again, though, here's the thing. It's hard for you to say that because you don't really know. You don't really, we don't know. I saw people saying yesterday, he's filthy rich. He is absolutely filthy rich. He doesn't need to gamble. And I go, newsflash, rich people gamble too. It's not the money. It's not the money. They're not, it's not the money. It's the rush of gambling. That's what it is. It's what it was for Phil. It's what it was for Jordan. Jordan had tons of dough. And by the and, way, all people who lost a lot of gambling. 100%. You don't hear many stories like Billy Walters of people who got rich gambling. Yeah, <laughs> the guy they based casino off of, that guy. Um, yeah, it's it's very rare that that happens. All right, well, you're going to check one uh, last bit of traffic with our Tournament of Drops champion, Kelly Danik, and then we'll come right out with Things Ben Likes to end our week here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Not a bad wrap-up for our morning drive. No incidents, no accidents, no ladders, no mattresses in lanes. Yeah, definitely Friday light conditions. Keep up the good work. Hopefully this afternoon's commute won't be too bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> Pepper's going to be filling in for me anyway. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. I like good juicy sweet strawberries. I like a good marching band. I like a good thin pancake. I like a Nickelback song or two. I like a barbecue too. chicken pizza. I really like those seeds. They're, I like a midnight buffet. <laughs> I kind of like the smell of soft scrub. I like more of a small derriere. I like cake. I like it, Sheeran. I like no. both a hamburger and a cheeseburger. I like clocks. I like how I've kind of set up my life. I like grasshopper pie. Oh, no, I like it creamy. I like good, firm banana. I like just looking out at the sea. I like eating. I like moist. I like curry. I like big butts. I like fried Brussels sprouts. I like more of a firm filling. I like corn. I like Nordstrom. I do like musicals. And I like pepperoni. I like nice hotels. I like Nick getting a start today. I like nuts. I like yeah. Steph Curry. I like that song. I like Squirt. I like Saki. I like San Diego State. I like uh, Straight Up, Paul Abdul. I like the beef and broccoli. I like yeah. to mix it up. I like science experiments. I like that song. I like the crispiness of the waffle. I really like cheese. I like the little lunch meat. I like very straight lines. I like cannelloni. I like a well-crafted headline. I like brown sugar. I like maps. I'll say I like Justin Turner. I like going to golf games. I like diving into chores. I like sugar. I do like Butterfinger. I like blue and silver are not bad colors. I like the time change. I like Major League Baseball's new rule. I like the radio. I like geography. I like the knuckle method. I like Skippy. I and mean, I like pie. And I like Bob Melvin. I really do. I like Jace Tingler, too. I like this day. I yep. like being right. I still do like movie scores. I like good food. I like maps. Right. I like when interviews can turn into organic conversation. I do like a Sofer's French bread pizza. <laughs> I like having the wind go through my hair. Oh I think I like shows that the characters have an arc. I like the full lettuce, tomato, onion yeah. experience as well. I like those kind of burgers. I like the big overflowing bag of fries. I like those little Smarties rolls. I liked what I saw from Seth Lugo. I liked his competitive fire. I like walking around between the different lands. Steve Kerr, though, I like that. I like living on the coast. I like watching Tiger still. I like the idea of that matchup. I liked what I saw in the preseason. I like the aloneness sometimes of Texas Hold'em. I like watching San Diego State basketball. I like those cashew buttered cashews. I like cold, clear sake. <gasps> Woo! Polly, you have put together so many of those and more apparently on the way. If only there were more. Mm. That's a good idea. I, and I promise you, I don't try to do it. No, he just, that's just who he is. It's like I'm thinking, ooh, I better say something I like, like right now. Yeah. If anything, now that we've done two rounds I avoided of things Ben likes, you would be super aware of it and specifically try not to. It would take me a year instead of a couple of months yeah. to come up with another one. I can't stop myself. He really I'm, likes a lot of stuff. Which is a good quality. I mean, you don't want to be the guy who hates everything. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I really do hate a lot of stuff. I do. I like a lot of stuff, too, but I hate a lot of stuff. 
All right, uh, really, really solid week, but very week. Next week. week we've got opening day at Petco Park. <sighs> My body is ready. Build it around Thursday. Uh, hopefully, the Aztecs are still alive on Monday morning. Uh, you win today, they play again on Sunday, but you got to get I, by UAB first. I noted terrible gambler Clay Travis took the Aztecs today. Oh, so God. I know I I I, I almost put money down. I almost I'm screwed. Was, go fade it right now. <laughs> go go hedge. All right, for Paul He's Reinald, never won a bet ever, for Stephen. Woods, I'm Ben Higgins, Annie and Elston coming up next. Have a great weekend from all of us here at 97.3 The Fan. So long, everybody.